All right. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, depending on where you are. Welcome to the Impact MANA Solar Session, harnessing long-term success, solar success in MANA, uh, emerging markets, and the key strategies. If this is the first time we are meeting each other, my name is Molly Huang, Content Manager of Leader Associates Impact, and your host of today's session. A bit of a marketing moment before we get everything started. The event is organized by Leader Associates, which is an international clean energy event organizer covering solar, wind, energy storage, and hydrogen. We organize high-level in-person conferences and exhibitions in over 10 countries across five continents in the world, attracting more than 40,000 industry peers every year. In March 2022, we will also have our physical MANA solar event, Solar Energy Future MANA in Dubai, dated on March the 30th to the 31st, served to accelerate the MANA decarbonization transition through industry face-to-face -face interactions. The regional leading utility scale and the CNI scale solar developers and investors, including NG, EDF, Aqua, Mazda, EWAC, Scotac, as well as the major investment vehicles like the Public Investment Fund and EBRD will also be joining us. The LA Impact Series, um, our, sorry, just give me mo one moment. The LA Impact Series, uh, which is our online brand that complements the ground activities, is a digital intelligence platform that teams up with global energy leaders, administrations, practitioners, and uh, forward thinkers to drive social wide approach to sustainable tradition and to inspire business growth across international borders. An overview of today's agenda, we quite focus on the policy landscape in key markets like Egypt, Jordan, UAE, and we'll touch on key supply chain and capex management strategies to ensure a sustainable and economically viable transition in the region. Well, I'm honored to have a great speaker lineup that guide us through the developments that are happening, um, but also give us some more insights into the priorities going forward. Starting with the first presenter, Mr. Ali Ahmed Ali, Director of International Cooperation Department of Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy of Egypt to talk about the current status and efforts for re-success in Egypt, followed by Mr. Rasmi Hames, Executive Director of Jordan Renewable Energy and the Energy Efficiency Fund, Jarif, to give an introduction about the Jordan Renewable Energy Market and the supportive funding programs. In the third presentation, we zoom in on the solar programs in RAK Municipality of UAE by Mr. Akshay Data, Strategy and the PMO Manager of Energy Efficiency and the Renewable Office REAM. And the last but not least, we deep dive into the supply chain management by Mr. Alvaro Gonzalez, Procurement Head of Aqua Power, one of the largest and the most impactful developers in the MANA region. Mr. Kasim Al Ani, Assistant Director General of the Iraqi Ministry of Electricity, is unable to join us, unfortunately, this time due to a sudden travel arrangement. However, he has been generous enough to address questions directed by the industry audience during the registration with prepared slides be shared along with today's recording later this week. And some housekeeping notes before we get everything started. If you encounter, uh, if you encounter any audio or video issues, please refresh your browser and uh, in 99% of the cases, the problem will be solved automatically. And use the chat box for greetings while the Q&A box is saved for directing questions. I'd also love to emphasize that each presenter will be given 30 minutes in total, combining 20 minute presentation plus 10 minute Q&A session. Therefore, we really encourage everyone to type your questions in the Q&A box uh, as the webinar progresses. I'd also love to mention that apart from players joining on Zoom, the session is also live streaming in WeChat for Chinese viewers. Thank you very much for staying up late and the joining session. Now, um, without further ado, I'd like to invite out our first speaker on stage, Mr. Ali Ahmed Ali, 
Director of International Cooperation Department of Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy of Egypt. Since October the uh, 2007, Mr. Ali has been working for the Ministry of Electricity and the Renewable Energy under several departments featuring leadership, international cooperation and agreements, as well as the development of technical planning and research. Over the past 14 years, Ali has also participated successfully in de developing about one gigawatt project portfolio of around 2 billion investments, having roles in project and finance assessment, negotiation, fundraising, constitutional procedures, as well as planning and implementation activities. With great honor, um, let's welcome Mr. Ali Amend Ali on stage and get started our first opening presentation. Ali, can you hear me good? Thank you, Molly. Uh, nice to hear you. And it's my pleasure being with you here and thanks for the invitation. And uh, I wish we meet next year in, uh, in March, uh, as you mentioned, uh, in uh, Dubai face to face so with all uh, panels and uh, attendees. Uh, and wishing you uh, successful uh, presentations and successful events for today. Thank you so much for your kind support and encouragement. Um, it will be our pleasure to have you there. And also, uh, may you kindly share the screen to your side and perhaps do a bit more introduction about yourself, your department, then fire up your presentation. Okay, uh, may I share my, pre my presentation now? Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, now the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ali Ahmed, uh, as mentioned by Ms. Molly. Thank you for the kind invitation and the kind presentation. Uh, I will uh, show you the current status and efforts uh, for Egypt Renewable Thrive, and I'll give you uh, a brief about the energy sector in Egypt. Uh, uh, this, and this will uh, take us, I may just show my screen clearly. Uh, the contents of my presentation will include the electricity sector until 2014 in Egypt and the challenges uh, met uh, the sector of electricity and energy in Egypt and the solutions made to overcome these, uh, these challenges. And then I'll show the current situation of electricity and renewable energy in Egypt, uh, uh, followed by the uh, uh, updated electricity and renewable energy sector vision and mission uh, uh, under the strategy of 2035 uh, that's set by Egyptian uh, electricity sector. Uh, also, I will show some legislative framework updates that uh, uh, already uh, uh, upgraded and uh, stated to the, our uh, energy sector to enable uh, more renewable, uh, renewable energy deployment in Egypt. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, combined with the incentives for the investment in renewable energy and uh, there are a lot of uh, ongoing projects and upgrades in transmission and distribution sector will be shown also. Uh, and uh, Egypt as international, uh, inter international interconnection and uh, uh, hub uh, in the region of MENA. Uh, and then I will finish my uh, presentation with the future projects foreseen in the next uh, few years. First of all, uh, the electricity sector until 2014, uh, uh, had already had about uh, 32 gigawatts of installed capacity and maximum load of uh, 20 gigawatts. Uh, this uh, was serving about uh, 30 million uh, consumers uh, with the electricity share of capita of about uh, 1,900 uh, uh, kilowatt uh, hour per capita. Uh, and the total electricity access rate was 99.7. Uh, these uh, main indicators uh, may show that uh, the electric sector uh, was covering uh, well uh, the demand, but in fact, due to the uh, large uh, uh, lifetime of uh, production facilities and uh, generation uh, power plants, uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, demand uh, met by uh, supply uh, wasn't that successful in that time. That's uh, why Egypt uh, faced several uh, challenges like fuel shortages, uh, massive electric electrical power outages, and uh, low ability of uh, power plants, availability of uh, power plants. 
Uh, and of course, we met several transmission constraints and process. These are challenges, uh, as you can see in uh, the right of the screen, in August uh, 24, uh, 2014, uh, we have already a uh, uh, deficit of uh, electricity supply uh, for up to six gigawatts uh, from our demand. Uh, Egypt has taken uh, uh, a very keen and uh, very uh, aggressive plan to have this uh, situation overcome, uh, and uh, a huge work has been done and accomplished to overcome the deficit in electricity supply. Uh, this uh, plan uh, included three uh, tracks. First one, the fast track plan, uh, and the second one, completing the under construction power plant started before 2014, and install installing uh, mega power plants in cooperation with Siemens company. And I will show you in the next uh, uh, slides uh, how uh, Egypt uh, uh, proceeds, uh, proceeded with these steps. Uh, first, uh, the fast track plan uh, uh, in about eight months and a half, uh, Egypt already installed around 3.7 megawatts of installed capacities, new installed capacities, uh, with a total uh, investment of $2.7 billion. These seven power plants uh, in different countries, uh, in different uh, governorates in Egypt, around Egypt, uh, to meet the deficit of electricity and the, in the very uh, uh, far away uh, locations like in Upper Egypt, uh, we distributed uh, a very uh, small uh, uh, units of 25 megawatts mobile units uh, around the Upper Egypt to meet the deficit in these areas. Uh, all these uh, uh, investments uh, were developed by EBC uh, plus finance schemes. Regarding the completing under the construction uh, power plants before 2014, there were a lot of projects uh, in uh, pipeline before 2014, uh, but uh, due to several circumstances met Egypt uh, in this time, uh, these uh, power plants uh, weren't uh, accomplished in the, the meantime uh, and the time they were scheduled for. Uh, but uh, after 2014, Egypt uh, 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 make it fast to uh, deploy the, and uh, install the plant. Uh, projects for uh, electricity generation and uh, already added capacities in a one year from January to December 2015, uh, completed uh, from the fast track plan and the, the already planned uh, uh, power plants before 2014, uh, around six giga, uh, seven gigawatts uh, from uh, conventional energies and renewables. Uh, this uh, uh, five uh, or six uh, power plants in front of us uh, around Egypt from north to covered Egypt from north to south uh, and covered several technologies from gas, renewable uh, energies like uh, uh, small uh, or medium hydro power plants and uh, wind and uh, uh, solar power. Uh, furthermore, Egypt installed the uh, three uh, mega projects. Uh, in cooperation with Siemens company. Uh, the electricity, uh, Egyptian electricity and renewable energy sector succeeded with Siemens to establish three megawatt load projects of total capacity 14.4 mega, uh, thousand megawatts uh, in 2.5 years. Uh, this, uh, as you can see, uh, around 45% of the installed capacity in 2015. And uh, by the end of 2015, all these uh, capacities uh, came uh, on grid, and also they were uh, financed uh, by EPC plus finance uh, for about uh, six billion euros. Of the added installed capacities uh, from 2014 to 2020 uh, already doubled the installed capacities in Egypt uh, in 2014, and as you can see, uh, we already added 20. 8.2 uh, gigawatts from different uh, technologies uh, from December 2014 uh, um, until uh, October 22 uh, to have an installed capacity uh, becoming 
around 60 gigawatts uh, this year. Here is the uh, generation performance uh, that, that, that already uh, plan, uh, planned and already uh, accomplished plans uh, succeeded in Egypt. You, uh, as you can see that uh, no load shedding after uh, uh, 2015 in June. Uh, and before this time, uh, a lot of uh, sheddings has been uh, uh, faced by Egyptian resource sector and demand that was very uh, uh, critical to be covered, uh, but the deficit of electricity uh, wasn't covering it uh, that uh, good. Uh, the current situation after uh, installing the, the fast track plan and uh, finishing the planned uh, projects and uh, having a new uh, uh, strategy in Egypt uh, up to up up to 2035, uh, we can uh, uh, we can see that the installed capacities come to uh, 6 gigawatts and the maximum load uh, increased to 30 gigawatts uh, and the number of consumers increased from 30 to 38 million uh, beneficiary from electricity service and have access to electricity. Uh, also, the electricity access rate increased to 99.7%. Uh, in fact, Egypt uh, is uh, uh, having a very large uh, demand and increasing demand in uh, several, uh, under several uh, sectors, especially in residential, which is uh, already uh, considered and uh, uh, expressing 45% of Egyptian uh, electricity demand. Uh, and uh, the total demand is foreseen to be uh, increased uh, three folds in 2050. Uh, Egypt's strategic vision for energy is to maximize the efficient use of various uh, energy resources in a competitive environment manner, focusing on renewable energy. A coherence among Egypt's energy vision 2035 and the national uh, SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030, and UN Sustainable Development Goals uh, in 2030, are all uh, 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 combined in the Egyptian uh, Sustainable uh, Energy Strategy 2035. The mission under this strategy is providing continuous and safe supply of electricity to all consumers in Egypt uh, on economic basis and according to international performance standards, uh, taking into consideration all the environmental, social, and economic uh, determin determinants and producing electricity from diversified sources of conventional and renewable energy. Uh, as, you, uh, as you saw in previous uh, slides, we already have uh, uh, installed gas from conventional uh, motor gas, and uh, uh, also we have wind and solar and hydropower plants. The energy strategy till 2035 uh, is approved by the Supreme, Co Supreme Council uh, Energy in Egypt. Uh, uh, under the name Integrated and Sustainable Energy Strategy for 2035, and it targets 42% of renewable energies uh, to be installed by uh, the year 2035. Studies are in progress to uh, raise this share of uh, renewable energy to reach 47% uh, percent of installed capacities by 2040. Uh, the mix uh, will include renewables, natural gas, nuclear, and oil. Uh, and currently, Egypt. Uh, uh, eliminated coal uh, option, coal uh, power plant option, uh, and exclu excluded it from energy mix to be replaced by renewable energy. Uh, the foreseen Egyptian energy mix in 2035 uh, uh, under the current plans uh, is uh, going to be uh, 42%, uh, and uh, most of them will be coming from PV installations, followed by wind uh, power plants. Uh, and the CSP and then hydro, uh, you can see that hydro will uh, not uh, be that much because the Egyptian uh, hydro resources uh, is limited. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, as you can see, the energy strategy eliminated coal uh, option from uh, uh, the mix. Uh, Egypt has a very good uh, potential from wind and solar. Uh, and these uh, solar atlases uh, 
prepared by the National Renewable Energy Authority in Egypt, uh, already showing uh, the uh, potentials from wind and solar, which uh, calculated at 90 uh, gigawatts uh, in the uh, shown areas in Gulf of Suez uh, and east and west of Nile. Uh, this uh, potential uh, in, uh, is calculated in uh, the areas which is already allocated for uh, Nerea projects, uh, which uh, are around 7,000 kilo uh, meters square. Also, Egypt's electricity sector has made a very uh, long list of uh, updates and upgrades uh, in uh, legislative infrastructures and uh, uh, to, to have this kind of uh, renewable projects installed and uh, encourage a private sector in participation in uh, our energy system. Uh, uh, started in March 2014 uh, by the, amend uh, the amendment of electricity uh, ministry uh, name uh, itself uh, by naming it the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy uh, to prove that Egypt has this mandate and this uh, strict plan to have renewable energy in uh, uh, its uh, future uh, generation plan. Uh, in 2014, also in July, a tariff reform uh, program uh, was adopted uh, and announced for five years up to 2019, uh, but uh, the, the plan is uh, delayed due to several circumstances uh, to the year 2022, uh, but uh, uh, this reform uh, targeted the uh, tariff uh, of renewable uh, of uh, electricity sector uh, uh, to uh, give this opportunity to renewable energy projects to come and uh, uh, have uh, uh, different uh, installations uh, in commercial uh, commercial come commercially to the, our uh, energy sector. Uh, in September, uh, the cabinet uh, approved the issuance of uh, feed-in tariff of electricity projects produced from renewable energy sources, uh, and uh, its prices was issued by Prime Minister today in October 2014. Uh, this uh, feed-in tariff scheme is already saturated, and uh, uh, two gigawatts from, uh, renew uh, from uh, wind energy and uh, another two gigawatts from PV uh, uh, already in place, and uh, some of them are under construction. Uh, NREA established, uh, uh, establishing law has been amended to allow NREA to establish companies by itself or in partnership with private sector to implement uh, renewable energy projects. In December 2014, a renewable energy law was issued to encourage generating the electricity from energy, energy sources uh, through different, different uh, schemes uh, from, uh, for, for energy uh, for project generation. Uh, like uh, build on operate scheme and uh, the uh, feed in tariff scheme and uh, the build uh, on uh, operate and transfer scheme. And also, we, uh, the, the, the law uh, gave uh, uh, a room to auctions, schemes, and uh, uh, competitive biddings. Uh, in July 2015, the new electricity law establishment uh, of the competitive electricity market uh, is uh, considered under law. Uh, which is based uh, on bilateral contracts and adoption of the concept of eligible customer, uh, third party access, establishment of transmission system operators, and uh, provide uh, assurance uh, for uh, private sector to uh, uh, invest in uh, new projects uh, for electricity generation. Uh, the law uh, issued uh, uh, in 2016. Uh, and uh, the second phase of uh, hidden tariff that is uh, really saturated and closed uh, was in October 2016. Uh, the law uh, gave several incentives for investments uh, in renewable energy in Egypt uh, by considering the renewable energy in our energy system strategy on 2035 to encourage private investments. We started with electricity tariff reform, as, an, as uh, already announced. Uh, since uh, July 2014, and concerning the renewable energy uh, made different mechanisms were considered, uh, EBC tenders, uh, BO, IBB, and hidden tariff, and net metering and auction scheme. Uh, 
the incentives also include the land uh, uh, that has been allocated for renewable energy projects, uh, solar and wind, uh, in Gulf of Suez and uh, in uh, east and west of Nile, uh, for areas about uh, 7,000 kilometers square. Uh, the availability of information is very crucial to project uh, investors, renewable energy project investments, uh, because uh, 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 if you don't have this kind of uh, resources, uh, uh, measurements and uh, uh, resources assessments, uh, you, you can't uh, boost the right the project in the right place. That's uh, why Nerea uh, insisted on having the solar and wind emphasis for Egypt, all over Egypt, uh, and make it uh, available for investors uh, to make it easy for them and uh, to uh, become a, a very uh, clear and uh, affordable uh, document available for investors uh, to help them make the decision of uh, investment. Also, we have the environmental impact assessment studies in place uh, by uh, Nerea in the uh, allocated area. Uh, Long-term uh, uh, bankable uh, for purchase and agreements and the uh, network connection contracts already in place too. And the custom duties for all important materials and equipment don't exceed 2% for new energy component. Uh, so we're in guarantee issued by Ministry of Finance uh, to uh, give this uh, kind of guarantees to investors uh, to come uh, to invest in renewable energy in Egypt. Uh, for the wind energy, uh, for, uh, for the current situation, Egypt established already uh, uh, 1.3 uh, gigawatts uh, in uh, Gulf of Zeit uh, wind farm and the Afrana wind farm. And uh, some of these uh, projects uh, is already uh, old uh, and need to be uh, uh, renovated and uh, upgraded uh, now, and uh, Egypt will uh, uh, cooperate uh, soon with several uh, development partners and private sector uh, to have uh, new projects uh, in these areas, besides the renovation and upgrade of the already installed capacity from wind energy. Uh, Egypt, uh, a few days ago, in fourth uh, uh, of uh, October, has signed a 500 megawatt uh, uh, project uh, in Gulf of Suez with the concert of NGE, Toyota, and Horasco. Uh, and uh, there were already uh, signed uh, uh, power purchase agreement with Lakela Power in Gulf of Suez of 250 megawatts. Uh, and now the under implementation wind energy project is about uh, 7, uh, 25, uh, 7, uh, 150 megawatts from wind energy. Regarding solar energy, uh, there are uh, 32 signed power purchase agreements. Uh, in fact, all of these uh, power purchase agreements in uh, uh, Binban uh, location in our Egypt uh, and the interim uh, president of the World Bank Group, uh, Christina Georgieva, uh, announced that the Binban solar project in Aswan uh, won the best project prize worldwide in 2019. Uh, and this uh, project uh, is uh, the, the, the proof of the Egyptian electric sector uh, of uh, involving the private sector in uh, renewable energy uh, and encouraging them uh, to come to invest in uh, renewable energy in Egypt. Uh, that uh, because uh, these 32 uh, projects are from private sector to inst uh, and installed 1.5 gigawatts from uh, PV uh, technology. And the project area uh, covered uh, 37 kilometers square, and uh, the total investments for this project was uh, more than $2 billion. Uh, and uh, uh, th this project uh, already uh, offered more than 10,000 uh, job uh, opportunities. Uh, regarding the hydropower generation in Egypt, uh, we already have six power plants uh, of total installed capacity 2.8 uh, gigawatts. Uh, the largest one of them is the high dam of 200.1 megawatt and the other uh, barrages and the reservoirs uh, in Aswan. Also, uh, they are in our Egypt. 
representing the hydropower uh, in Egypt, and uh, it's already uh, uh, installed uh, uh, since uh, a long time ago, 1960, uh, from, uh, for the high dam, and uh, several upgrades and uh, uh, modernization projects uh, already implemented on these uh, uh, power plants from hydro, uh, and they are working uh, in our system. Uh, so uh, the current renewable energy situation uh, from wind and solar PV and CSP and hydro uh, already uh, compromising uh, 5.8 gigawatt, which is repre representing 10% of uh, total renewable energy in the Egypt. Uh, the coming uh, projects in Egypt for uh, renewable energy and the nuclear uh, are uh, part of our uh, noble, uh, of our energy strategy for 2035. Uh, Egypt is plan uh, planned uh, to have 4.8 gigawatts from uh, nuclear power plants in uh, Taba, with investments for about uh, 21.3 billion dollars, uh, and already contracted the Rosatom from Russia, uh, and uh, it's foreseen to be comm in uh, commissioning in 27 uh, to 2030. Uh, because the project will be uh, uh, developed uh, in 1.2 gigawatts uh, every year uh, to be uh, on there. Uh, and then uh, we have also the Ataka bomb storage power plant. Uh, it's about eight units, each one, each one representing uh, 300 megawatts. Uh, it's a bomb and storage power plant of total capacity, 2.4 gigawatts, and uh, investment cost around $2.6 billion. Uh, and it's, con it's contracted with Sino Hydro from China, and the project will be is foreseen to be implemented in the next seven years. Uh, Egypt didn't uh, uh, forget the upgrading, upgrading of transmission grid, that because uh, the deficit in 2014, as uh, already uh, discussed, uh, part of it was the transmission grid, which uh, was not that. Uh, uh, affordable and uh, in a good situation to uh, cover uh, the demand uh, and uh, evacuate the uh, already uh, generated capacity to the demand uh, side. And then Egypt uh, started to have new control centers to upgrade the transmission grid and uh, have a new transmission network expansion of 500 kilovolts uh, and also a new substations construction. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this slide is showing the control centers uh, before 2014 and uh, the other ones uh, under implementation and the completed. Uh, they, there are uh, around 11 uh, uh, control centers around Egypt uh, and uh, a lot of upgrades uh, in cooperation with the development uh, partners uh, are in ongoing. For the 500 kilovolt uh, transmission network and the substations, uh, Egypt already added more than 3,000.6 kilometers uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, cables uh, for transmission network, uh, which uh, around 1.5 times the existing length uh, in 2014. And already added 30 uh, substations with total capacities of uh, 44.2 uh, megavolt ampere, uh, more than four times existed in 2014. Uh, regarding the modernization of distribution control centers, actually the project for the establishment and development of control centers of distribution companies uh, implemented uh, uh, under uh, four phases. Uh, and the first phase uh, uh, targeted uh, 12, uh, control centers and it's foreseen to be finished by 2021. And uh, the total uh, plan uh, for the modernization of distribution control centers is foreseen to, uh, to be finalized by December 2024. Uh, and uh, uh, they will be, there will be around uh, more than 30 control centers around Egypt uh, serving the grid. Uh, also, Egypt, uh, under its uh, uh, under its strategy, uh, 
consider the interconnection with neighbor countries uh, as a very uh, considerable uh, factor. Uh, that Egypt location uh, gives it the privilege to be an energy hub for international interconnections and corridors uh, in MENA and uh, uh, in MENA region and uh, to Africa, also to Europe. Uh, participation in global interconnections uh, is very uh, good for Egypt and is a very excellent uh, uh, opportunity for Egypt because the excellent location, uh, Egypt, uh, as you know, is uh, located uh, between Europe, uh, Asia, and Africa, and exi existing interconnection with uh, neighboring countries like Saudi Arabia, and Jordan, and Libya, and others, uh, and the huge renewable energy potential, uh, and for, of course, the surplus in, in energy uh, production in Egypt uh, after the uh, implementation of uh, the and already uh, discussed projects. Uh, and uh, currently, the trans transmission and distribution networks are, are being strengthened and upgraded uh, to, uh, to have uh, to evacuate more energy uh, on them and uh, to have smart uh, grids in several uh, locations in Egypt. Uh, to have uh, finally a uh, smart grid all over the country. Uh, of course, the strong uh, local manufacturing uh, uh, of electricity from equipment uh, is a very uh, good uh, factor for Egypt. Uh, that uh, already, uh, Egypt already have uh, manufactured for cable and uh, some uh, several uh, uh, mechanical and electrical components that serve the uh, energy project and the electricity uh, generation project. And interconnection. Uh, Egypt is an energy hub, as you can see from this uh, slide. Uh, Egypt uh, uh, lies in the heart of the, uh, the world, uh, and already have uh, interconnection with uh, Jordan for uh, 400 megawatts, uh, 150 megawatts, and it will be upgraded to reach uh, 3,000 megawatts. Uh, of, uh, also, Egypt uh, has. Uh, uh, connect, interconnection with Libya up to 200 megawatts and uh, two lines in, in, for interconnection with Sudan uh, are uh, ongoing and uh, the uh, interconnection with Saudi Arabia uh, is already uh, signed uh, during uh, this uh, month. Uh, also, uh, the electrical uh, interconnection for current projects that can be uh, shown here. And uh, as you can see, the implementation uh, started uh, like for, uh, for Cyprus to interconnect Egypt with uh, Europe. Uh, interconnection with Cyprus is uh, started in 2018 uh, and is foreseen to uh, exchange about 2,000 megawatts between the two countries. Uh, regarding the future project, so which uh, I would like to uh, finish my presentation with, uh, Egypt uh, is looking to look, looking for uh, having projects from waste to energy, uh, and energy uh, from waste uh, is in the process of generation in the form of electricity and or heat. Or, or heat. Uh, according to the Ministry of Environment, we have a plan to have 20% of the total uh, collected municipal waste will be uh, forwarded to the technologies of uh, waste to energy, uh, about 4.2 million tons of uh, municipal waste uh, will be uh, converted to energy. Uh, of course, private sector uh, participation is, uh, is highly recommended and invited uh, to uh, participate in this kind of projects. And the compensation tariff for purchasing the electricity produced from solid waste uh, is already in place and calculated at 1.4 Egyptian pounds per kilowatt hour. Uh, the expected electricity that could be generated from waste, according to the cabinet decree, uh, is foreseen to be 300 megawatts in the coming uh, five years. Also, Egypt has a very ambitious uh, target for green hydrogen, uh, uh, connecting to several uh, efforts for green hydrogen ad adoption through bilateral cooperation. A few days ago, precisely uh, in October 4, Egypt signed its, an, uh, its agreement uh, with three companies uh, from Norway, Netherlands, and United Arab Emirates to establish a 100 megawatt hydrogen facility. And uh, already uh, Egypt is a member of uh, Hydrogen 
uh, green hydrogen collaborative framework and the green hydrogen compact of IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency. Also, Egypt is studying the modernization of the old Egyptian chemical uh, industries factory that uses electricity from hydropower to produce ammonia since 1965. Uh, thank you, and uh, I, I, I have the pleasure to receive your uh, questions. Okay, thanks, Ali, for this generous and uh, comprehensive overview of Egypt's real landscape. To give a brief summary, um, Egypt intends to increase the supply of electricity generated from resource uh, from the 20% by 2022 to 42% by 2035, and among which PV power is expected to provide around 22%, wind around 14%, CSP around 5%, and hydrogen, uh, sorry, hydropower around 2%. Uh, but, but there is one type of project missing here, um, that is the battery storage projects. How would you size the battery storage market in Egypt, either in terms of utility scale usage or commercial scale usage? And uh, what about the uh, application scenarios? It will be used linking to the generation like batteries coped with um, solar and wind or um, it will mainly be applied to ancillary services like uh, stabilizing the grid or um, peak shaving. Your idea. Um, sorry, Ali, you are muted. Uh, actually, uh, for uh, uh, storage in Egypt uh, is already uh, planned for small projects, not for not for the uh, utility projects uh, with uh, mega uh, mega production uh, from PV or wind or other renewable energy uh, energy technologies. Uh, of course, because of the cost, and uh, Egypt uh, is looking for uh, this kind of uh, storage in through the in exchange of electricity with neighboring countries. It will not be direct storage in, as as known in battery storage. For, la uh, for large uh, uh, utility scale uh, projects, uh, but uh, uh, the interconnections uh, will cover this kind of storage by exchanging electricity uh, with the neighboring countries uh, in the big uh, load uh, area uh, time. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the storage is very uh, crucial for uh, renewable energies uh, and uh, for the uh, the intermittent uh, 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 the inter the intermittent uh, what's say uh, uh, sorry I missed the, I, I, I I missed the word <laughs> uh, the intermittent situation of the renewable energy uh, which which needs uh, for this kind of projects, a very large investment, uh, which is not uh, foreseen uh, uh, maybe in the near uh, near years uh, to be established in Egypt. So, uh, in, in terms of a large scale, like uh, renewable energy storage, or you know the grid facility um, stabilization, um, CSP would be a more um, uh, how to put it, uh, it CSP would good enough or makes more sense in the Egyptian landscape? Uh, in fact, Egypt has uh, 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 an experience with uh, CSP projects. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's a very uh, a good opportunity to, uh, for Egypt to have this kind of projects and so the, the, the only project from CSP is about two uh, megawatt uh, projects, uh, 20 megawatt projects uh, uh, combined with a gas power plant of uh, 120 uh, megawatts. Uh, but Egypt faced several uh, 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 problems uh, uh, with this kind of uh, uh, projects. Uh, but it's uh, uh, in our plans. Uh, uh, but uh, BV and wind are the most uh, foreseen projects uh, in the future, in the near future, at least. Yes, 
And uh, it's, uh, I have a very interesting figure from our second presenter uh, from his slides, actually. Um, it, he, it, he wrote on the slides that um, um, the retarget for Egypt uh, by 2035 would be, four, uh, would, would be 54 gigawatt of renewable capacity. And currently, we are standing at 5.4 gigawatt. So it means um, you need to um, growth at time times and uh, next 15 years and uh, which resegment holds the most potential in that landscape uh, as presented uh, in the, during the presentation uh, you can see that uh, most uh, the, the most uh, dominating uh, technologies will come from uh, 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 wind and solar uh, and as I mentioned, uh, that our wind uh, projects, the old wind projects, uh, are of uh, small capacity. It's more than uh, 30 years ago, uh, power plants, uh, installed 30 years, years ago. And upgrading these uh, projects uh, will enable Egypt to have uh, the, the, the planned uh, installed capacities uh, in this uh, uh, small time uh, of, plan, uh, of planning the uh, energy sector. Uh, and of course, uh, wind, uh, wind in, uh, as an instance, a wind, uh, wind project in Gulf uh, Suez, the capacity of a turbine is about 700 kilowatts. And, uh, and we have already, uh, we have now five megawatt uh, turbines for, uh, for wind. Uh, so uh, this kind of uh, technology upgrade will enable Egypt to have uh, the 45 uh, gigawatts in the, uh, under the, the current plan. Yes, very well. And, uh, and what do you think would be the challenges in execution of large solar or wind projects in Egypt? If possible, maybe we can talk, um, retrospect into the uh, 380 megawatt Ben Ben solar farm you just mentioned in the presentation slides. What might be the challenges for large scale redevelopment in Egypt and uh, what might be your inputs on that? The first challenge is finishing the, the transmission lines and the interconnections uh, that will evacuate all these uh, uh, kinds of uh, gener uh, generation from renewable energies from wind and solar to the grid. Uh, this uh, challenge is uh, crucial for Egypt, electricity sector, because if we if didn't finish uh, our transmission lines in time, uh, this kind of uh, generation projects uh, will, will not be a successful investment. Uh, we will lose a lot of money and a lot of efforts uh, uh, from this side. Furthermore, uh, the next challenge Maybe the for the BV project, uh, the dusty uh, the dusty uh, weather of Egypt, which uh, which will uh, will make it uh, uh, higher in uh, ONM uh, costs uh, than uh, when the projects uh, we already have uh, uh, the price of uh, price for for, for uh, BV. Uh, electricity generated at 1.9 uh, US dollars and for the wind is the 2.1 uh, US uh, dollars for kilowatt hours. Uh, and uh, uh, increasing this uh, cost uh, will uh, make the privilege of gas uh, in Egypt uh, and giving it a, a privilege uh, uh, competing with the renewables again, because Egypt already has a, a lot of uh, discoveries from gas in the recent years. I think uh, these uh, three challenges are uh, the most crucial for the deployment of uh, wind and solar in Egypt uh, during the, at least the five or 10 years uh, in future. Yes, and uh, as you touch on the transmission line, uh, as well as its, uh, its potential constraints to the renewable energy, can you tell us a bit more about you know the connection fees at the moment and uh, what about the quota for renewable energy for 2022 or 2023 do we have a quota uh, no i don't i don't think we have this uh, now we do uh, 
uh, and uh, I don't think it's it's not blending. Okay, good. And also um, about um, the supply chain as well as the local content issue um, in Egypt, is the production of solar modules going to be localized in Egypt, or if there will be any other components um, shall be um, localized in Egypt? Uh, actually, Egypt already uh, uh, manufactured about 70% of its uh, projects of renewable energy projects uh, already uh, manufactured in Egypt. We, uh, we have uh, 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 some uh, factories for, uh, uh, for wind uh, blades, for wind blades, and of course, cable uh, uh, manufacturers uh, and uh, cable factories. And we also have uh, the mechanical and the consultative uh, services uh, provided from Egyptian uh, private sector. Uh, but the 30% uh, is foreseen to be uh, export, uh, imported from uh, development countries, uh, partner development countries, and private sector uh, uh, stakeholders who are coming to this. Right. Uh, for the PV, for the for the PV uh, uh, technology, uh, Egypt started uh, uh, a factory in cooperation uh, with uh, China, uh, small small facility for uh, uh, BP manufacturing. And, and I think the, it, it's, it's being upgraded uh, uh, in the next few years. Uh, it's going to be upgraded to uh, produce uh, more than uh, uh, 3,000, uh, 300 megawatts per year. It's a small facility, it's not a very big. Yes, great. And um, one last question before we wrap up your session. Um, the, the last question with regards to uh, international energy trade. As you mentioned in the slides that multiple uh, interconnection partnership and the projects are being signed uh, between Egypt and Jordan, Libya, Saudi, Greece, etc. cetera. Um, can you give us a big picture about how about, about the future of this international energy trade market in your eyes? Uh, in fact, Egypt is starting targeting uh, uh, to export all, uh, all the surplus to uh, the neighbor countries and uh, Europe, Europe uh, precisely. Uh, because uh, uh, during the last uh, few years, uh, we already signed several uh, interconnection uh, agreements uh, and uh, already we have this uh, project for uh, interconnection with Greece, uh, Cyprus and to Europe and uh, also we have this uh, line uh, from Egypt to Jordan uh, uh, to, uh, that will be uh, continued to Turkey and uh, to Europe from the east uh, side. Also the Libyan uh, interconnection with Egypt uh, is foreseen to, to be completed uh, during the few uh, coming uh, years uh, to uh, interconnect Egypt to uh, Morocco, then to Europe on the uh, west side. Uh, of course, Egypt uh, has a very uh, huge potential for interconnection and uh, uh, electricity trade, uh, and uh, this will be uh, 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 this will be foreseen in in, in near future. We will not so wait uh, too much to uh, see this important information and trade of electricity with our neighbors. Great. Thank you so much for your kind address and thank you so much for being with us today. Um, if I may, um, I'd like to welcome on stage our second presenter of today, Mr. Rosmi Hamza. Uh, Executive Director uh, of Jordan Renewable Energy and uh, Energy Efficiency Fund. Just give me one moment. Rasmi, are you with us now? Uh, hi, Muli. Yes, um, so I, I will firstly do a brief introduction about you. Um, Rasmi has 25 Thank years you. of professional experience as a business development consultant of different sectors, 
in the past five years, uh, he has transformed the Jarif from being a component of the REEE law to becoming a real operating efficient national level government organization. He designed the Jarif strategy and plans also coordinated efforts with the international donors, organizations, NGOs to help Jordan address some of, some of the biggest climate change challenges. And without further ado, uh, I think we will be driving the slides for you, Rathmi, right? That's good. That's fine. That's fine, Molly. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Ali from Egypt. Uh, it's a very nice presentation and uh, uh, wishing you all the best. Great. Um, I think we can get everything started um, as the slides are right. on the screen. That's, that's good. Thank you, Molly. Just let and, me know uh, when you want. Just let me know when you want to switch to the next slide. Uh, all right. Uh, also, I can manage uh, by myself uh, the slides from my side. But uh, please, uh, yes, uh, uh, it's wonderful if you can show the slides for the audience from your side. This is good because this is, will facilitate me, uh, and uh, I will manage from myself as well uh, uh, on my slides. All right. Okay, Molly, um, uh, as you know, uh, uh, Jordan uh, really uh, uh, has uh, uh, had a developed, uh, uh, you know, um, success story uh, in the past six years in terms of renewable energy and the energy efficiency framework. And uh, uh, since 2012, uh, where the laws uh, been issues for renewable energy and energy efficiency issues, uh, Jordan start uh, really uh, 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 start is uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, a proactive uh, actions uh, to implement a comprehensive uh, strategy for renewable energy in Jordan, and uh, this is. Uh, 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 included uh, into the bylaw by frameworks, as well as uh, policies, and, and this is uh, uh, also being comprehensive uh, to include all the uh, sectors in Jordan, uh, uh, as well as to manage uh, all the uh, traditional fossil electricity sources, uh, like use uh, Jordan to depend uh, on, and. Uh, uh, so in 2015, uh, the bylaw uh, and laws have uh, been issued and uh, uh, to organize all renewable energy transition uh, process and strategies, uh, as well as uh, Jordan Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Fund being established. Uh, uh, here, actually, in the middle being uh, the private sector playing main role uh, to, to manage and to proact and to lead uh, the new experience of uh, uh, renewable energy, uh, farms, solars, and wind, and uh, together, really, uh, private sector and uh, the government, they um, establish, let's say, a success story uh, in Jordan. And since that time, in 2014 uh, till 2020, uh, now. Uh, uh, 2,200 uh, megawatt uh, uh, on the grid, and uh, uh, there is around the three being freezed for uh, technical issue reasons. Uh, however, the plans uh, for the next 10 years uh, until 2020-30 and 2050 uh, are promising, uh, as Jordan uh, really uh, insisting on the transition from uh, 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 a smooth transition to, to renewable energy and to a green economic activities. Uh, Jordan uh, uh, and then now uh, uh, achieved uh, uh, by 2020 uh, around 20% uh, of our electricity being generated from renewable energy. And uh, uh, that's including wind and solar uh, farms uh, in Jordan. Uh, as uh, also uh, a comprehensive action being designed and planned uh, for all sectors in Jordan. It's not just, uh, we are talking about uh, like uh, mega 
investments and farms. Uh, no, we are talking about a comprehensive action and that's including households, worship places, schools, um, agriculture sector, industrial sector. And uh, with this, actually we are including everybody and achieving the goals uh, and objectives of uh, economic and uh, comprehensive uh, development, achieving development uh, uh, goals for Jordan and uh, uh, also mitigating all the issues related with electricity price, uh, electricity prices and all the industries who actually depends on electricity and moving also to e-mobility at the same time. So we can see a very comprehensive action related with electricity, as well as a very comprehensive action uh, uh, related with the, uh, 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 all the sectors and industries. Hey, Rathmi, uh, Rathmi, sorry yeah. for the interruption. I hope we are on the same page uh, because the audience can only see slides driven by our side. I'm not sure if you have done any actions to you know, switch the slides because uh, we didn't get any you know, signals. Uh, yeah, okay. So we can go now uh, to slide, let's say Which four. To slide, uh, to, to page four, right? Yeah, based uh, on Jordan Energy Strategy 2020-2030. Um, uh, it, it shows um, it will be Jordan transition journey. Yes, Jordan solar energy and yes. uh, based on Jordan energy strategy. And uh, let's say this is, uh, uh, this slide is number Number four. Number four, exactly. All right. Okay, okay no problem. And uh, please okay, do let so us know if you are that's... moving on to the next next page. All right, I will let you know. I thought uh, that's, uh, uh, that you are working really with me uh, on the slide. Okay, so Jordan, uh, let's say, establish all the uh, rules, regulations, as well as build the fund in order to follow up this issue. What's important and impressive with Jordan experience here really is uh, that Jordan um, built really a framework of uh, 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 investments, uh, round investments, uh, round one, two, and three. Uh, the framework of accomplishing these investments uh, nationally and internationally being really a good experience for Jordan to accomplish a transparent process for implementing uh, mega investments in Jordan. Uh, what also been interested here, that's all the international funding and uh, let's say commercial international uh, uh, banks uh, being on board of uh, financing this, local banks being also uh, on this and central banks supporting for the interest rate issue for special interest rates for the renewable energy. Jordan Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Fund, which is I, I am I'm working as executive director for, uh, so we can go to the next slide, uh, uh, really played a main role of uh, uh, making, uh, let's say, success story for Jordan in a transition on different sectors, not on mega investments, so that you can see that Jordan really uh, uh, sitting on the second uh, after Egypt in terms of uh, 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 in terms of categories, scores for countries, uh, you can see Jordan uh, uh, here as a second uh, after Egypt in terms of market structure, in terms of policy framework, in terms of uh, institutional capacity, and in terms of finance and investments. So, and this is important uh, uh, by the way, and this is uh, uh, makes Jordan uh, really um, uh, in hierarchy for the, the slide after that. Okay, uh, after Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, UAE. So Jordan will be also uh, ranking uh, of achieving um, a 15% by 2025 of uh, total energy mixed. Next slide also, you can see also uh, regarding the operational capacity to 2019, uh, the wind capacity 
the PV capacity and CSP capacity. We are not uh, really doing well with the, in terms of CSP capacity because of its uh, really high cost and uh, we can't see that it's efficient uh, uh, enough right now. So we are depending on wind and uh, the PV uh, and uh, solar, I mean. So we can see that uh, the opportunity in terms of uh, uh, payback period is better. The slide after, uh, uh, always uh, regarding the solar energy, we are uh, relying on the prices and technology. So we have problem, by the way, on the grid in Jordan. We have a limited capacity of the grid uh, so that we always uh, uh, can uh, really receiving a very limited uh, uh, capacity of renewable energy. And this is one of the main problems of developing the grids in Jordan. Uh, uh, now we have a green corridor to the, uh, trans the electricity from the southern area to northern area and the middle. And we are now developing also another uh, grid uh, lines on the eastern area, uh, preparing for the uh, connection with Iraq uh, and uh, Syria, Lebanon, and Saudi Arabia uh, as well. So we can go also now to the financial mechanisms that we are following to support different sectors. Always we are focusing here, Molly, uh, is uh, for a comprehensive actions as well as, you know, uh, to covering different sectors. And this is very, very important. So uh, with Jordan uh, Renewable Energy Funds, we have uh, uh, different financial mechanisms. We have grants, we have interest rates, uh, subsidy, we have banks, loans, uh, guarantees, we have cost sharing with international donors. Uh, and this is really played main role of uh, implementing our project and increasing our uh, investment side. Uh, uh, so we are depending uh, regarding the windows on bank and microfinance companies and loans uh, working with the uh, NGOs and CPO, local CPOs. Uh, when we are talking about implementing different projects for worship places, schools, um, uh, industrial sector, uh, agriculture sector, and households and all around Jordan, we have to, you have to build a, a very strong partnership with the uh, local NGOs in order to implement this, as well as to have a clear financing uh, uh, mechanisms and uh, financial windows uh, to facilitate for people to utilize. And the subsidy here is important uh, headlines for, uh, for, the, for the households and the grants for the poor people and other institutions. Also, Jerif uh, and the government of Jordan through Jerif, we've been working on this intensively in the past six years uh, so that our investments with the uh, different sectors uh, uh, and local sectors on a small scale projects uh, for institutions, for governmental building, for local CPOs, for the households. Uh, it's been around 100 million US dollar in the past six years, just through our institution, which is Jordan Rubin Energy and Energy Efficiency Fund. And uh, uh, of course, uh, important here when you are dealing with international donors to have really a very a transparent uh, policies so that we have uh, gender policies, evaluation policy and environment social policy and data policy. All of these policies you have to be reflected in, your, in the projects you are implementing uh, with the local community and uh, with your local uh, projects. The slides after, we are talking about Jarif objectives, uh, Molly. Uh, are you following up with me? We are on the same page. Yes, yes, good. So uh, this is uh, when we established Jarif. Actually, we we've been, you know, planning to uh, create and uh, uh, develop a very comprehensive mechanisms of work in order to create that smooth transition to renewable energy and energy. Efficiency and to create as well a culture of energy efficiency and focusing on this because sometimes people saying that the issue is renewable energy and just that's it. No, it's not just that like that. Energy efficiency is very, very important and comes, you know, in the uh, at the top of the issue. So uh, uh, one of the main objective for Jarif is really to establish a culture around renewable energy and energy efficiency project and support it 
financially. And we did uh, excellent in, in the past six years on this. And we actually opened the floor for all the sectors, including all homes uh, linked to the electricity uh, grids in Jordan to utilize and be beneficiaries for our, uh, for our projects. So, uh, with this, uh, you know, actually, Jarif uh, uh, developed a very comprehensive networking in inside Jordan and outside Jordan with the support of Commercial Bank and Central Bank with uh, uh, through subsidizing, through giving grant and through giving loan guarantees uh, in order to ensure that all the agencies and the local community are engaged with our projects and utilizing our funds uh, as well. Uh, 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 slide after showing that uh, the, the, the map of our projects now, as I mentioned, we have just a project for schools, all the schools in Jordan now subject to be uh, covered by energy efficiency mitigations as well as renewable energy, uh, of course, including hot waters and of course, lead lamps, uh, including insulations as well for the existing building household sector, tourism sector for the hotels, for example, to increase their competitiveness edge and to ensure they have a good services, industrial sector. And of course we have for the uh, non-profit and uh, uh, local NGOs, agriculture sector, health sector, and uh, we have awareness and the training for local community. And we have a project for local municipalities as well. And uh, 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 we have uh, important a project also for the worship places, mosques and churches. Until now, we covered more than uh, 600 uh, worship places with the uh, renewable energy and implementing uh, energy efficiency mitigations. So as you can see, it's very comprehensive map. And this is what we, what we call really a very comprehensive action and smooth transition on different sectors. Not, we are not just focusing on mega investments in Jordan. The slides after, uh, this is samples of what we are doing with the residential, residential issue. We are focusing on uh, uh, installing the PV for the rooftop for all houses, uh, as well as a solar water heater and uh, also the lead lamps. So we are implementing a comprehensive action for the households. And uh, this is a type of uh, uh, non-profit programs as well. Uh, after that, the industrial sector, the slide after, uh, we are implementing energy uh, audit studies, and this is important culture to be established for the uh, industrial sector and for the hotels, uh, because um, um, usually they are they think that if they covered by uh, uh, renewable energy, that's their problem with the electricity will be solved. We're telling them, no, there is a lot to be saved through energy efficiency and the energy that gives you really a very comprehensive report in order to implement a comprehensive action according uh, uh, plan, clear plan. And the uh, tourism sector as well. Uh, uh, we have also for the schools. After that, I explained about that. The municipalities after the program, this is an important program. All we have 100 local municipality in Jordan uh, and different around Jordan. And all of these municipalities by uh, next summer will be covered by renewable energy uh, systems in their rooftops. And uh, of course, we are implementing energy efficiency mitigations and uh, uh, for those uh, municipalities. And uh, uh, it will be fully grant from Jarif and uh, uh, our partners uh, working with the uh, Jarif in, in financing issue. Uh, we are uh, looking for uh, uh, these actions for local municipalities uh, really as an uh, important action to increase their competitiveness to serve the people better. <clears throat> and also the public health centers, the program after, uh, most of the people who are using the public health sectors are women and uh, children. So we would like to ensure that they have really uh, a very, very comfortable environment inside these uh, centers and uh, the source of the uh, electricity for all the health centers will be from renewable energy. So just to ensure they are, uh, they have heating, cooling, and uh, of course with lead lights and all other energy efficiency mitigations. 
And uh, of course, the worship places, I, I love this program. This is an important action so that to see all the churches and mosques are really covered with renewable energy uh, uh, um, PV systems. And uh, this is an important message for all the prayers and uh, uh, really saving electricity and uh, ensuring there is a comfortable environment inside the, these worship places. Uh, uh, as well. Agriculture system is very important. As you know, uh, the challenges now with, with the climate change is really water and uh, food issue. So we are focusing on all the uh, water saving uh, measurement uh, and solar system for the farms in order to ensure that really it's mitigated and uh, they are utilizing all the technology needed with this. And this is important project uh, for, uh, for uh, Jareef. As you can see, I finalized my slides. As you can see, we are focusing in Jordan in a very comprehensive uh, project. And our ambitions for this year uh, for, for the COVID-26 uh, really is updated. Uh, and we are uh, uh, targeting uh, by 2030 uh, to decrease uh, and commitment for our NDCs by 31% uh, uh, of our NDCs. And this is important uh, ambitious. We, it's already, uh, com uh, it's already um, uh, up uploaded and updated on the UNFCCC website. And uh, in the COP, uh, uh, after two weeks in Glasgow, we will, we will actually focusing on uh, the role of all countries to decrease their anti uh, their, uh, their emissions and uh, uh, focusing on the climate change uh, actions. And in Jordan, one of the actually main sector who's really played main role in this is the uh, energy sectors uh, in terms of energy efficiency and renewable energy as well. Our uh, uh, electricity system is not, not, not that big. Uh, actually, uh, our peak is like uh, 4,200 uh, mega, not that big really. However, our system really we're facing uh, a technical problem regarding the grid capacity so that our plans for renewable energy and mega investments looking forward for ambitious uh, targets, but uh, we need uh, side by side to build uh, also our technical uh, issue and our uh, grid capacity uh, uh, in this regard. Uh, I, I will stop here, Molly, and uh, if there is any questions, uh, uh, I will be happy to, to, to answer. If there is any points, uh, need more information and to expand uh, and give more uh, also details, I will be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rasmi, for this uh, very interesting presentation. I think it takes time for audience to type down their questions. So before we move to the field ones, I think we can uh, have a look on the pre-collected questions that we received uh, from the registration. Um, as you mentioned in the slides that um, Jordan targets 15% uh, of reshare by 2025, which means a 3.2 gigawatt, 3 gigawatt of cumulative yes. recapacity shall be in place by the time. Um, how, how do you perceive the near-term prospects for grid scale and the CNI scale solar energy in Jordan, respectively? Uh, we we are on the track. By the end of this year, we will achieve. Will be actually uh, around twenty one percent of our electricity. It will be uh, the source will be from renewable energy, and uh, uh, the plans been uh, uh, really uh, uh, designed. And our strategy is launched uh, according to twenty twenty five. We will have three point two uh, uh, giga from uh, uh, our full capacity. And uh, uh, I think uh, the actions uh, uh, regarding building the capacity of the grids and uh, the financing also uh, mechanisms and uh, coalition between banks to support this and the framework, uh, uh, legal framework is all there. So I think uh, we are on the right track regarding this issue, but our ambitious actually is, uh, is increasing day after day and the transition uh, in uh, all the sectors uh, is uh, on the table now. Yes, and we try to figure out what might be the prioritized technology in the Jordan real landscape. Uh, for example, you think solar will be prioritized or wind or hydrogen or any other? Um, solar, solar and wind now. 
solar and wind now really and uh, uh, a better is actually in the plan uh, we have a very small project now for batteries uh, like uh, i think 20 mega uh, but uh, there is a project for batteries uh, on the plan now uh, and uh, under uh, design uh, for the next two years uh, but we didn't have like uh, a big project for like other resource of renewable energy right now. So solar and wind is the really a very, uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, the main source now in Jordan. And it's, uh, it's good actually, because our environment is uh, uh, reasonable for this. And uh, regarding the uh, CSP is uh, not well now because in terms of the uh, payback period is still uh, uh, a very high cost uh, in terms of uh, solar and uh, wind and we have the option with solar and wind so we prefer these two sources until this moment yes and you also mentioned in the slides that quite a lot of funding funding programs are being carried out with respect to residential sector industrial sector tourism sector municipality sectors as well. Um, to what ex extent does the private sector um, participate now with Brown? The private sector is working side by side with Jurif through implementing the project. We are financing and developing the mechanisms and designing the projects. And uh, the private sector really, they are working on all the projects. By the way, private sector, they led the renewable energy experience in Jordan. They did the success story that we have now, but the private sector, and we have very close partnership with the, with the private sector in this regard, and they are doing great job in terms of renewable energy projects are all around Jordan, mainly with the small scale projects. And uh, um, it's very important, by the way, it's not, we, we should focus on the small scale projects. It's good for the, for the grid and you are distributing the load as well as the benefits for the people. You are creating a comprehensive development issue. Really, it's important because people, they should feel uh, of renewable energy benefits. They should feel why renewable energy is important. They should, the, 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 the renewable energy should be reflected in their life. It, this should create socio-economic impact directly on the job creation, on the environment, the climate change, as well as on their monthly electricity bill and their welfare issues. So uh, it's, it's like this. Yes, that, that was a really good point. And um, especially uh, when we consider today's auditorium will be mostly the international investors and the capital holders, any, spe any special projects, incentives, or facilitations would be available for foreign investors to Jordan. And now we, we have in 2000, two years ago, actually, because of the technical pro uh, problems and the grid uh, limited uh, space, uh, the government took a decision to freeze the projects um, above one mega, above one mega for a while until they finalize all the technical studies and until they finalize upgrading the, uh, the grids, uh, 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 which is now and processing uh, right now. Uh, corona uh, time really impacting uh, implementation uh, of uh, different projects for the grid issue, but, uh, and finalizing the green corridor project now, um, but uh, it's on the process to build up uh, these uh, uh, issues in terms of technicality and uh, the grid uh, capacity. Uh, however, uh, with, the, with our strategy, there is um, a project assigned uh, uh, and announced uh, and uh, uh, we are encouraging uh, different, uh, uh, the private sector, industrial sector, hotels, uh, to implement uh, small scale projects uh, and different around Jordan. So there is a lot of opportunities for the private sector to work in, uh, on this. Um, but, you know, the strategy, even it's uh, launched, but I think uh, it will be open for, uh, uh, to be uh, reviewed again, uh, uh, each year according to the developments happen in terms of technology, in terms of technicality, uh, and in terms of different elements uh, determined uh, uh, implementing uh, these issues. 
but uh, for the investors and funding uh, projects for the commercial banks, international commercial banks who are working with Jordan, like EBRD, IFC, and others, actually they know exactly how things are going in Jordan, and they know exactly they are figuring out uh, the plans, uh, and uh, I think they are on board with uh, the private sector working on this. Great. And, uh, and, and as you focus a lot on the small, uh, on the small scale um, projects, so which would be easily affected by the fluctuation of energy tariffs, how would you focus the future energy tariff in, in Jordan? And uh, how would you view the future prospects of CNI Solar or private PPA in Jordan? Um, uh, recently, the government and the EMRC, or the, the regulatory the com uh, uh, commission for the electricity sector, actually, they designed the new tariff uh, prices. At, uh, grew, uh, uh, let's say, uh, and they designed like three uh, types of uh, the tariff uh, in Jordan. And I think this is important step forward. And uh, we, 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 we need to take in consideration that we are not uh, increasing the prices even for the um, lowest, uh, 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 let's say that the people who are consuming um, uh, low, uh, low in the low consumption, like 300K per month and below. So uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the, 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 the strategy and the prices regarding the, uh, the, uh, the tariff is, uh, uh, will not be changed in the next couple of years and will be same. However, we are encouraging uh, uh, to install renewable energy and utilizing all the technologies around in order to increase the prices. For the uh, industrial sector, the government supporting this sector and agriculture as well as tourism with the tariff prices. Uh, at the same time, they, uh, for example, last, uh, last year, uh, the, uh, a 100 mega uh, license given to the industrial sector for specific areas to implement solar uh, farms and uh, to support the industrial sector with this. So there is a shots for different sectors regarding this issue. And uh, uh, I think this is important to forward. Yes, very well. And one last question, um, uh, one last question before we wrap up the talk. Um, if there's one thing that you can do to further speed up the solar as well as other renewable sources development in Jordan, what would that be? Uh, for, for me personally, uh, Jordan Renewable Energy and the Energy Efficiency Fund, we are hoping that the people of Jordan, all the households will be really linked to through uh, net metering uh, and installing uh, their own PV systems. And we are relying on the prices and technology. And this is important. And this is really create a hundred of thousands of job opportunities and making the economy moving well locally, even if it's small scale. On the national level, uh, yes, we are we're hoping that uh, uh, our transition to renewable energy uh, will be uh, 100% uh, fully by 40 or 50. Uh, and uh, uh, this is our hopes. And uh, I'm relying also on the technology and the prices in, uh, in the near future to change uh, all the rules uh, and to solve uh, a lot of technical problems that preventing now from this full transition. Yes, great. Thank you so much, Rasmi, for taking out the time. I know it's a holiday season in Jordan. Much appreciate okay. your generous and insightful it's a pleasure. introduction. I hope you enjoy thank the you. session. Thank, thank you. you. I do. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now let's move on to our third presenter um, of today, Mr. Akshay um, Data Strategy and uh, PMO manager uh, of energy efficiency and renewables office uh, of RAK municipality of UAE. Um, Mr. Akshay, welcome. Hello, hi, I'm Ali. Hi, um, the UAE launched its energy strategy 2050 in 2017, and that was the first unified energy strategy uh, in the UAE based on the supply and demand. Um, 
In addition to the federal strategy, there are also a number of strategies that have been set at Emirate and the municipality level. Um, in REK, the energy efficiency and the strategy 2040 has indeed set a great example for other jurisdictions to follow. Uh, without further ado, I think I will leave the floor to you. Maybe you can do a bit of uh, introduction about yourself and then uh, start your presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Molly. Um, I will put up my, my slideshow. Uh, I hope this works. All right. Right. Um, is it working? You can see my, my screen? I can see it. OK, very good. Um, so uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Molly. Um, uh, my name is Akshay. Um, I'm the strategy and PMO manager. Um, um, at the Energy Efficiency and Renewables Office of Ras al-Khaimah. Um, um, Ras al-Khaimah is one of the Emirates of the UAE for, uh, for those, uh, for, for the international viewers um, in this webinar. It's the northernmost uh, Emirate um, and we are normally known for uh, tourism. We have very beautiful beaches, um, very beautiful mountains uh, um, and we are a manufacturing hub of, of the UAE. We have a very strong uh, industrial uh, base here. Um, um, so for this kind of a, a place uh, like Russell Kim, um, along with, um, with the federal uh, authorities in the UAE when, when they launched and when they were preparing um, the energy strategy for, for the UAE, um, we were in parallel preparing our energy efficiency and renewables uh, strategy. Um, This is how we, we represent our strategy. Uh, it is geared more towards um, competitiveness um, and uh, competitiveness of the economy uh, that can be obtained through sustainability, through so uh, cost competitiveness of, uh, of the industry, of tourism, of, of the commercial activity, um, uh, cost competitiveness of the economy overall. Um, through sustainability. Uh, we do this through uh, several programs in the strategy that address different types of energy consumption. Um, more of our strategy is geared towards energy efficiency uh, than renewables. I, I will take you through this very quickly. Um, uh, we have two programs, green building regulations and building retrofits that address buildings. Uh, we have had a, a lot of success with these programs. Uh, we, uh, we launched our green building regulations, Bar uh, in 2019, uh, and we have more than 3,000 buildings now permitted uh, under our green building regulations, which are um, more than 30% uh, energy efficient compared to uh, normal, uh, not conventional buildings, uh, baseline of buildings constructed before, before this. Um, uh, our building retrofit program has addressed uh, comprehensively, including uh, HVAC, lighting, uh, water heating, uh, insulation, uh, pumping, all kinds of energy consumption in the building, uh, more than 50 buildings um, with, with a pipeline of uh, more than um, 200 more buildings in, in various stages of tendering, uh, uh, construction. Um, we have our third program of energy management, uh, which addresses uh, high energy users, uh, such as the government itself, and also uh, large industrial companies. Um, we, through this program, promote uh, energy management practices, uh, such as energy audits, um, ISO 50001, um, and regular energy reviews and reporting um, to these energy users. Um, we started with the government here, and we have also been quite successful here. Um, in the next uh, two, three years, we plan to have most of the government entities in Russell Kimmel certified to ISO 50001 standards. Um, then we have a program uh, for efficient appliances where we plan to promote um, efficient domestic appliances, uh, air conditioners, refrigerators, washing machines, dishwashers, etc. Uh, to the public here. This, this program is led by uh, the Ministry of Industry in the UAE. It is led by a federal government entity in collaboration with us. Um, and uh, through their uh, body, uh, through their 
agency called ESMA. Um, they have already set up uh, since a long time, since before our strategy, uh, several um, energy efficiency standards for different appliances. And now in partnership with them, we are promoting these appliances in Rasa Um Programs five and six um, are for efficiency in, in uh, civic uh, municipal, municipal services. Uh, so street lighting, uh, making street lighting more efficient through LED lighting, smart lighting, um, and then uh, making our um, uh, wastewater systems more efficient, uh, collecting uh, more wastewater, um, uh, treating all of it, and then reusing it uh, for irrigation, for industrial uses, um, for district cooling, for example. And, and promoting increased reuse um, is part of, of uh, our objectives for this uh, program. Uh, this program is managed um, or is led uh, mainly by the, the wastewater agency of Rasa Um Then we have the solar programs, um, which are quite simply to promote solar energy in Rasa um, which I will talk about more today. Um, we have energy from waste program uh, led by the waste management agency in Rasatema, um, which uh, tries to, to look for different um, energy outcomes for the waste streams in Rasatema. Um, we have several projects called under evaluation here also um, use of uh, alternative fuel derived from waste in the industries, uh, you know, development of uh, biodiesels. Um, uh, biogas projects uh, also. Um, and uh, lastly, we have a program for efficient vehicles. Uh, this program is, is uh, led by the utility company here, uh, Etihad Water and Electricity, which is also a federal uh, government entity, um, where we, uh, together with uh, the federal utility company, install charging stations, uh, create standards for EV charging stations, um, and also we have set up an incentive program to, to incentivize um, vehicle owners to purchase uh, electric vehicles. Um, we have a few targets. Um, by 2040, uh, we target 30% energy efficiency uh, compared to the baseline of 2017, 20% uh, water efficiency, and 20% of our consumption uh, being produced by renewable energy sources in Russia uh, Today, this number is nearly zero. We have about one megawatt of, of uh, uh, solar capacity installed in, in 2018, very small. Uh, as you will see, we are making much more progress towards uh, this target. Um, solar program in more detail, um, we conducted in 2018 a study uh, related to the, the solar potential in Rasakim to find out what is really the potential of solar, uh, distributed solar energy. We found out that given the buildings in 2018 and the space we have on the roofs of all these buildings of different types, you know, being the municipality of Rasakim, we knew um, uh, we, we, we had records of all these buildings. So we were able to do a citywide study. And we found out that in 2018, our distributed solar potential, considering um, some margins for uh, you know, people, uh, for, for buildings who are tenanted or buildings with roofs that are not usable, um, considering margins of allowance for these, uh, we have a potential of about 340 uh, megawatt approximately. Um, however, by 2040, uh, given the growth of, of our emirate, uh, Rasa Kema is a very fast growing economy. Um, we expect this to, to more than double to, to 750 megawatt. Um, and therefore, given this potential, we set an ambition uh, for distributed solar uh, penetration of about 80% of this potential, which is uh, 600 megawatt. Um, and then we said, if we have a distributed solar potential of 600 megawatt, let's try to have also um, an ambition for utility scale solar of another 600 megawatt. Uh, and both of these together, um, at distributed and utility scale level, together add up to about 20% uh, of the electricity needs of Russell uh, And this is how we, we set our target to, to achieve these ambitions. 
Our focus uh, is, is more on the distributed solar uh, compared probably to other countries. Um, we have an ambition at distributed solar equal to what we have for utility scale. This is for two reasons. One is that um, our strategy, coming back to our strategy, it is more for um, uh, uh, energy competitiveness. Um, and by that, I mean, oh, sorry, I didn't bring this here. <laughs> um, by energy competitiveness, I, I mean uh, reducing the cost of energy to, to the final consumers. Um, and we see that distributed solar is really what reduces that cost. Um, utility scale solar uh, can ultimately reduce the cost of, of energy overall for an economy. Um, but distributed solar provides the benefits of, of lower cost directly to the customer. Uh, so we wanted to focus more on distributed solar. Um, and the other reason is uh, for, for, this, uh, for this balance is that uh, Ras al Khaimah as an emirate uh, has a large area, but most of the, most of the space is, is uh, difficult mountain terrain, um, um, which reduces the amount of, uh, of open space available in Ras al Khaimah for you know, large uh, gigawatt scale solar installations. Um, anyway, from this uh, start, um, we had some discussions with the utility company in Russell Kema, the, the status of regulation of distributed solar um, is, very, is very nascent. Uh, yeah. uh, the utility company, um, and, and, uh, which is governed by federal regulations, uh, did not have any um, existing regulatory framework for um, uh, distributed solar energy. This framework is now being is now in advanced stages of being prepared. Uh, but while this is uh, established, uh, we agreed with the utility company uh, to have some initial uh, conditions for uh, connecting distributed solar installations to the grid uh, while a regulation is is uh, is ready. Um, so these are the conditions under which distributed solar uh, installations can today connect to uh, the utility in Russell Um uh, Up to 10% of the total connected load is allowed, uh, connected to uh, medium voltage 11 kV or, or low voltage uh, 415 volts. Um, of course, there is an application process uh, to the utility to where they have water and electricity. Uh, to which, for which we can provide support. Um, the system has to be zero export uh, to the grid for now. Um, um, and uh, use of, of this uh, process to connect a solar installation um, means that uh, today a customer is not eligible for other uh, exceptional discount schemes or initiatives. Um, now, under these conditions, um, we were able to launch um, uh, the development of some standard uh, uh, contracting templates, uh, tendering documents to support the market in, in Russell to, to, to take off, to grow. Um, and with this uh, contracting framework, we started a first to tender for distributed solar installations. Um, now, given these connection conditions, uh, we, we saw that the volume of initial installations um, was, was limited. Um, so we did a first tender for 15 megawatt, approximately up to 15 megawatt, um, aggregating many different uh, installations, uh, 100 kilowatt, 500 kilowatt, one, two megawatt together, um, uh, so that we could benefit, so that all these customers could benefit from the economies of scale, you know, getting a price together for 10, 15 megawatt. Um, the joint tender requested both EPC and lease prices because some of our customers wanted uh, both uh, options to choose from. Um, and all the participants agreed to, to choose uh, um, one or two optimal suppliers depending on uh, offers received under this tender. Uh, our office, REAM, uh, within the municipality facilitated this tender. So, uh, we set up agreements and we use with all the participants of the tender. This included government entities, government-owned companies, uh, completely private companies also uh, that operate in that in, in Asakema. Um, uh, 
So we set up agreements with them to manage an aggregated tender process for solar installations. Um, and uh, we also manage for them the approval process of, uh, for, for, from the utility, um, from within the municipality, uh, building approvals, et cetera. Um, and we launched a tender um, to developers and contractors. We did the evaluation um, and uh, we recommended uh, bidders for selection. Also, um, this uh, process was very successful. Our tender received 84, more than 80 uh, pre-qualification submissions uh, from around the world. It was an international tender. There were uh, several um, um, uh, bids also from, from Indian companies, Chinese companies. Uh, we pre-qualified out of them uh, 21 um, bidders uh, with sub to submit private, uh, final proposals. Um, and out of the final proposals received, uh, we selected one uh, bidder as an impaneled bidder, um, which, uh, which, which bid a prize um, providing 65% savings versus the utility the tariffs, the normal utility tariffs, um, which was a very, very advantageous price. Um, following the standard, we, have, we, have, we are very advanced in this process already. We have completed the entanglement of bidders, um, completed uh, the detailed proposal stage where uh, our selected bidder goes to every site, uh, creates a detailed uh, you know, design uh, for each site, assesses the, the, the energy production for each customer. Um, and now these installations have been submitted for utility approval. Um, we expect uh, this approval to come very soon in, the, in a matter of weeks. Uh, following which um, these projects will be contracted and, uh, and then executed. So we are near the end of this of this process. Um, uh, to, to summarize, and uh, the end, Russell Kema has now many opportunities for solar, uh, given that we have just started in our journey uh, promoting solar PV. We have many off-grid opportunities, which are a short-term priority for Russell Kema. Um, Russell Kema has many um, remote locations in, in mountain um, areas um, where uh, there are several plans and several short-term plans to develop, for example, um, mountain uh, luxury resorts or uh, uh, beach resorts, uh, camping areas. Um, which require uh, large capacities of uh, off-grid uh, uh, power. Um, we see close to three megawatts of, of off-grid projects um, in the short term, uh, and we welcome uh, we welcome uh, new developers, new uh, uh, yeah, suppliers to uh, participate in our tenders uh, for for these installations. Um, our plan for distributed solar um, is includes additional um, aggregated tenders. Given that we conducted one tender uh, last year, which we are still in the process of finalizing contracting, um, I, I would I would expect um, roughly another tender perhaps next year, depending on on the demand we see from uh, from our customers, uh, from our government commercial industrial customers for, for solar installations. Um, of course, this process of ag aggregated tenders will accelerate um, once uh, there is a federal regulation on, on uh, connection of distributed solar to the grid. Um, today, we are doing uh, 10, 15 megawatt um, aggregated projects. Once there is this federal regulation, we can look at probably 50 megawatts or 100 megawatts of aggregated solar. Projects. We have many, uh, we have uh, huge lists of, of clients uh, waiting for this uh, to, to happen. Um, and uh, the last big opportunity I can, I can present to you is, is a first utility scale project uh, that is in, in, in the initial stages of evaluation um, and identification uh, discussions with, with utility partners. Um, and um, as, as for our aggregated tenders, we will inform the market uh, 
when these opportunities come from. Uh, we probably have an international tender just like this day project. Thank you. This was my, my presentation. Please feel free to contact uh, Anoop, our renewables manager, or, or myself uh, for any questions. I encourage you to visit our website uh, for, for any further information. Uh, for our, uh, we, we publish many viewpoints uh, and many pieces of regulation there. Um, you can find all information about our programs. Thank you so much, Akshay, um, for the kind and the detailed address. Um, one, one question, can you uh, lower down the microphone to your lips area? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, sorry, sorry. I hope you could hear me. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Um, before we get to any um, on-site questions, um, let's review some of the pre-collected questions first. And the, the first question following your presentation would be your perception on distributed and especially CNI rooftop market uh, in RAK. Um, when the Dream Office firstly uh, conceptualized the CNI solar projects in 2016, um, you actually did a full study and uh, collected, uh, collected the data from both the public and the private companies in the region uh, with regards to their roof areas, their loading, and their interest to accommodate rooftop solar systems. Um, in the meantime, I, I believe there is also a lot of CNI development and investment interests uh, from a global level, um, either in terms of a lease model or a uh, capex model. Um, can you introduce a bit more about the CNI development status in RAK? Um, is there any challenges in your opinion or uh, how the future looks like? Sure, uh, sure, Molly. Uh, just wanted to correct you a little bit. Uh, we, we did the study in 2018. Um, 20, 2016, the study uh, had started on a preliminary basis. Um, uh, it was started, in fact, in the Investment and Development Office of Frost and Pema. Um, um, and then completed in 2018. Anyway, um, the CNI market in Rasatema is, is very big. Uh, the potential is very big because it is the industrial hub of the UAE. Um, there are huge uh, industrial and warehouse areas uh, just waiting for, for solar installation. And um, as you said, also rightly, there are large uh, investors, also local investors and um, from overseas, uh, that would like to invest in, in these kind of projects. We have seen a lot of interest. Um, frankly, the challenge that I see in this market is, is uh, regulation. Um, uh, the, the regulation has been, uh, I would say, lagging uh, compared to uh, other markets in the region, for example, Jordan, which was just presented before, uh, or compared to Abu Dhabi or Dubai, where um, regulation has now allowed um, uh, renewable energy installations, um, um, but we, we expect this to come very soon. We were in the process um, of consultation that uh, the federal entities in the UAE uh, use uh, so for, for setting up these regulations. Um, so there has been already some back and forth uh, drafts of, of uh, uh, distributed solar energy regulations. Um, and we expect in the next, in the coming few months, uh, a new um, regulatory setup for uh, for allowing uh, these installations more broadly. So we expect yes. this market to transform with regulation in the next few months. Yes, very well. And uh, as you also introduced in the presentation that uh, the RAK municipality has a very ambitious target 600 megawatt for distri distributed solar and another 60, uh, another 600 megawatt for utility scale solar. However, in 2020, we encountered um, the COVID impact. Um, there are a lot of things changed um, in, in this dynamics. And um, uh, in the regional level and in the global level, uh, a lot of governments are uh, ramping up efforts for what we call a green recovery. Um, do we have similar programs in the REAM office or in RAK as well? Absolutely, absolutely. In Ras um, al the, the impact of the pandemic um, was surprisingly positive uh, for sustainable energy. Um, so the government leadership here uh, 
immediately saw the, the need to accelerate uh, energy efficiency programs uh, and, and renewable energy programs um, um, you know, to, to, reduce the, to reduce the impact of, of any future such events um, and also to take advantage of, of the, of, of the uh, say short-term opportunity of the pandemic. So uh, because, of, for example, because of the pandemic last year, um, a lot of the, the schools were closed. Uh, for a short time you know, and a lot of the offices uh, were closed. Uh, this gave us an opportunity, in fact, to um, retrofit some of these buildings that were closed um, in a more easy way to, to audit these buildings, to retrofit them, to change their system. Uh, and it made it easier because there was no occupancy in these buildings. So normally, it becomes a hassle to, um, to retrofit, uh, to work on existing buildings that are occupied, but, but this was not the case uh, last year for, for a few months in the pandemic. Um, it also gave us an opportunity to work on our energy management programs. Um, uh, we, we realized that um, um, energy management can, can really save us uh, a lot of a lot of money, you know, frankly. Uh, um, and, and the COVID pandemic really showed us how much uh, we can we can say by, by turning off the ACs uh, when when the building is not occupied, for example. Um, um, on the solar program, um, I would say that we continued um, more or less as as per usual, um, with uh, nearly no impact of the pandemic, no delay, uh, nearly no changes in in prices uh, observed. Yes. Yes, and um, um, and as you mentioned. Um, um, uh, the RAK municipality are, um, would love to involve and uh, encourage the private sector investment uh, into the criteria. Um, any incentives on the table right now, whether it's a financial incentive or regulatory incentive for especially the foreign investors? Okay, uh, we have incentives today in Rasathema for um, uh, SMEs, uh, new businesses uh, in the energy sector who want to set up uh, their office in Russell Kema. We have some business setup incentives, uh, reduction in fees for business, for licensing, etc. cetera, here. Um, uh, we are also looking at um, promoting local, uh, local business and local, localization of, of solar projects. Um, uh, we are studying still this, how to do this, looking at the model of, of Egypt, of Morocco um, for localization. Saudi Arabia also has some good uh, examples of, of this, um, but we are still studying this topic. Right. And, uh, and uh, one more question with regards to larger scale projects. I think the projects you mentioned was in partnership with the FEWA. Um, FEWA, uh, now um, I, I should say at heart um, WA. Um, yeah, the land, yeah, the land was also identified, the land for uh, the site, I, I should say, uh, land of the site was an identified um, in 2016 or 2018 as well. Uh, why there's a huge time gap between the site and identification and the, the development? Because we are still in early stage, you know, um, uh, assessment and evaluation. Yes, there was an initial site um, identified in 2016 for this uh, for a utility scale project with with FIWA, which is now EWE. Um, however, this project was uh, was was in the end it didn't happen um, because FIWA went through a restructuring process uh, to now become EWE, uh, move from an authority to a company. Uh, several of its other stakeholders also um, had a restructuring process. Um, there was probably a change of, of priorities there uh, that, uh, that I'm not fully uh, aware of that I, I cannot comment on. Yes, and do we also have a uh, local content policies that may relate to the development of this utility scale project? Um, not yet, not yet. Uh, we are still studying, as I said before, we are studying the topic of, of creating a local content policy uh, that would incentivize you know, indirectly um, uh, local setup of, of manufacturing of, of companies here. Yeah? Um, 
Uh, yes. We are looking at the models of Morocco, Saudi Arabia, etc. Right. Um, and uh, I, I saw there are three remaining questions uh, in both the mm -hmm. Q&A box and the chat box. However, I think considering the um, nature of these questions, it might be a little bit um, sensitive. So I will leave you to you know, scrutinize um, these questions privately and see if you are comfortable uh, with addressing them. Sure, sure. So um, there is a question, how many megawatts will be monitored uh, among the 600? Um, I assume you're talking about distributed uh, solar installations um, and we intend to monitor all of them. So we have technical standards for um, monitoring systems for distributed solar installations that we, um, that we enforce uh, for all the projects that we do. Um, so we intend to have all of these uh, projects monitored with the consumption, uh, sorry, the, the production um, load profiles. Um, and then which company was the winning bidder um, in the aggregated solar installation? So uh, we have empaneled um, an Indian company, uh, EESL, it's an Indian uh, uh, government uh, enterprise. Um, however, as, as you saw in the presentation, they are still in the phase of uh, uh, utility approvals and, and submitting proposals. Um, so they have not been contracted. Um, you said there was another question. Um, uh, in the Q&A box, but it's not very related to our topic today. Um, they're asking uh, if RAK is considering other renewable energy options, for example, like uh, water. Yes. Um, so we are looking, we are studying, in fact, and we have studied uh, some of these options also, um, things like uh, pump storage in our, in our mountains. Um, things like uh, floating solar installations, um, geothermal energy. Uh, uh, we are in uh, various stages of studying all these options. However, for sure, the, uh, the priority is solar. You know, in this region, with the kind of solar energy resources we have, um, uh, it would be a crime you know, not to prioritize solar. And the last question, uh, following up your um, mention to the floating solar projects, um, mm -hmm. have we installed any test bed or it's, uh, it's, it's in a very early stage of uh, um, feasibility study? Um, some feasibility studies are complete um, uh, and we are monitoring test beds that have been installed uh, by, by other contractors in, in Dubai. Um, and there is one uh, test uh, pilot installation that has been proposed uh, in, in Russell Kenya, uh, but uh, not installed. Great, great. And thank you so much, uh, Akshay, for joining us. Um, I really appreciate your uh, time and your presentation. It was a good one. Thank you, Molly. Uh, thank you for this platform. I hope this was interesting. Yes, um, and now we are reaching our concluding sessions, um, supply chain management in MENA in the post-pandemic area, contributed by our last but not least speaker, Mr. Alvaro Gonzalez, Head of Procurement of Aqua Power. Um, supply chain is more than materials or components, but require great industry know-how, especially in region like MENA, uh, where everyone is striving to reach the lowest LS LCOE to win the bids. Aqua is one of the most impactful developers in the region, and I believe there are uh, a lot to learn from um, Alvaro's presentation and from the company strategy. Mr. Alvaro, um, if I remember it right, uh, you've been in the MENA region for around three years. Maybe you can start with um, a bit more detailed introduction about uh, your ideas, your thoughts on the regional developments, and then fire up your presentation. Sure. Thanks, Molly. Let me let me share my screen. Okay. Sure. One second. Invisible. Um. I think we need one more second. I saw you are uh, starting the screen sharing, but I haven't synced. Yeah, 
I saw the slides. Okay. So thank you very much for your introduction. As uh, you have said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, over the region a little bit uh, more than three years, more than four, by the way. Uh, but uh, worked uh, in this region since a long time ago, not uh, not uh, sitting here, but uh, knowing very well the region. So uh, today what I'll uh, do is I'm, I'll introduce the strategy of the company that uh, uh, somehow allowed us to reach some of the uh, world record tariffs that we have uh, provided in the past uh, in the past projects, okay? And uh, focus in the, what uh, has been the impact of this uh, company strategy on the supply chain management uh, in particular. I'm Alvaro Gonzalez and I'm the head of the supply chain in, in Aquapower. Okay, first let me introduce a little bit Aquapower. Okay, we are um, a developer, investor, or an operator of uh, uh, power plants and desalinated uh, uh, water plants. Okay. We have in total, I think that this is a little bit uh, outdated, but uh, we have in total more than 64 assets all uh, over the world in 13 countries, okay? Uh, out of them, 41.6 uh, uh, gigawatts of uh, power installed and more than 6 million of cubic meters of desalinated water, okay, per day. So uh, basically, we are one of the leaders in the region, uh, both uh, regarding uh, Power plants and uh, and the desalination uh, or desalinated water. Uh, okay. uh, how our shareholding structure looks like is uh, shown in this slide. Uh, however, the last uh, IPO is not reflected here, but I'm sure that everybody is aware about the successful IPO that we have announced um, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And uh, yeah, basically what we, uh, we want to show here is that uh, even if we are a private company, we have uh, public shareholders, okay? Uh, and now also the stock market, okay? So that uh, uh, means that we, we, we have uh, had to implement a full and uh, uh, the most strict global standards of corporate governance and risk management, okay? And especially in the procurement process, that you know that is very sensible and is very um, uh, somehow screened by all the shareholders. Okay, so this is uh, yeah, we are a private company, but we have a public uh, shareholders, and we have uh, as well the stock market now. The, we have been listed in the in the Saudi stock market. Okay, um, here you can you can see which is uh, our strategy. Uh, regarding the three main activities or the three main business line, developing, investing, and operating our assets, okay? So basically, uh, in regards of the development, we clearly focus on uh, investment grade uh, sovereign linked uh, optakers, okay? Um, provided that, that they offer long-term PPAs uh, backed by uh, sovereign warranties, okay? In order to be able to uh, make a as much or as much bankable as possible of our, our projects. Okay, then uh, as investors, we like to uh, stick and uh, retain long term and a significant part of uh, the stocks of uh, our of our projects. Uh, why? Because that makes us uh, being able to deliver increase in cash flows. Okay, and uh, give us the largest scalable investment platform. So we can. Uh, keep uh, investing and we can uh, keep increasing our portfolio that allow us somehow to um, look at the supply chain in a different way, not uh, project by project, but uh, as a portfolio uh, wise uh, mode. No? And then finally, uh, all our assets are operated by our sister company, uh, Nomad, that is 100% uh, owned by Apple Power. Okay and uh, only operates our assets. That means that uh, the level of uh, knowledge and the level of uh, experience uh, is retained inside the company, okay? So that allow us to implement all the lesson learned that we have uh, uh, seen in the operation of our assets. And this uh, allow us to um, lower 
further the cost of the operation of our plants by implementing the last technologies and implementing the last uh, lesson learned that uh, we have seen in our in our projects. Okay, so as a developers, we look at the supply chain, uh, not only from the um, capex perspective, but we see at the supply chain in a holistic manner. I would say, okay, from the uh, upstream raw material manufacturers up to the uh, installers or the small operators that we subcontract to operate our plants. Okay, that. Uh, that being uh, allocated in our in our plants and in our local uh, regional offices. Okay, that that has been allowed us to uh, deliver the lowest tariffs that you have seen in, in the last projects like uh, Diwa Five or Alpha Isalia that uh, were close to one cent. Okay, of the US or per, per kilowatt hour, and uh, yeah, and uh, also allow us to having under control the full supply chain and the whole value chain of the, of the solar uh, projects allow us to mitigate and to keep very well controlled our risk. And that uh, will help as well to show that our projects are uh, somehow attractive to other lenders and to our investors and uh, make us collecting, uh, let's say, uh, good amount of funds to be invested in our in our projects okay. uh, from the beginning from the very beginning and this is related with one of the, the topics uh, from today's uh, uh, discussion is uh, how the large projects can unlock and can uh, somehow uh, drive the, the growth of uh, a company uh, in especially in solar no uh, we have been focused uh, from the very beginning in Dark projects with uh, with the purpose of uh, leverage this uh, big capacity uh, to unlock other capabilities, uh, not only in the region but outside, and being able to grow in uh, in the international market. Okay, uh, since we are the one of the largest developers of the region, we have based this growth on dark projects and uh, happening around DCC because you know in this region all the projects are most of the largest of the world. Okay. And uh, that unlocked uh, some capacities and, uh, and have made us able to tackle some other uh, large projects uh, in other countries outside of the MENA region. Okay, so these, these large projects impacted somehow um, also the way that we have uh, managed our supply chain from a project wise approach to a complete portfolio uh, oriented uh, strategy. Uh, that allowed us as well to. Uh, to use framework agreements and uh, developing a strategic partnership with the most relevant and reliable international uh, manufacturers and, uh, and suppliers, as well as develop, uh, because uh, we, we, we develop or we participated in large projects, as well as developing our local uh, subcontractors and our local supply chain that support the operation and, uh, and the maintenance of uh, our assets. Okay, so um, we like to call us ourselves as uh, as uh, cost leaders. Okay, um, other than the structural um, aspects that you cannot uh, avoid because of the let's say um, uh, because of the type of uh, project that you are facing or the site or the country that you have uh, decided to uh, target, okay, there are some other aspects that impact as well the LCOE and you can control like the technology, the finance, and that, uh, finally the, how you uh, propose your, your pricing. Okay, um, I want to say that uh, we uh, focus in the, in the technology, okay, being a fuel agnostic uh, while we um, have attendance on, uh, on, on solar because this is the region with the best solar resource uh, of the world. So naturally, we have attendance of, of perfumes in, in, in solar. Okay, uh, and uh, and uh, why we focus in technology because it's the is the base of being a, a, a tariff leader. Okay, uh, a good or a proper and fit for the purpose conceptual and basic design 
uh, allows you to uh, deliver the most competitive tariffs because uh, you have the optimized uh, capex, the optimized opex, and then granted the, the reliability and the performance of your plant in order to uh, meet on, and match the targets of your financial model in, in, in any in any case no so you give the confidence to the uh, finance uh, institutions that you're going to be delivering and by the way all our projects are uh, over over producing so we can show our track records to our financial partners and uh, since we have worked very hard in the technology and implementing the optimum scenarios and the optimum uh, strategies, we are able to show our lenders that uh, we are reliable and we are uh, overperforming in almost all our projects. Okay? Then the, our financing costs are uh, lower and we are uh, lowering our financial uh, our financing costs. Okay, And, and lastly, uh, our, our strategy is not uh, being market uh, oriented uh, regarding the prices. We don't care about the prices. Uh, of the electricity or the water in the markets that we decide uh, to target. Uh, we try to do our best. We try to optimize our projects using for sure technology and, and design. And, and then we uh, figure out we see which is our um, fair revenues and, uh, and uh, we try to match the expectations of uh, our lenders. And then this is why we calculate the tariff. We are not uh, driven by the market, okay? And usually that uh, made us uh, very successful in, in some countries that uh, we really lowered the tariff uh, significantly um, that compared with some maybe previous uh, feeding tariff programs, okay? So um, again, insisting on, on, on which are the components of, of uh, Tariff, no, is uh, from from bottom that is the most important one that is the capex to the uh, upper part that is the fuel. Okay, now today we are talking about the solar, so fuel is is, is not uh, is not a discussion. Uh, well, uh, in summary, we try to lower the the capex. Okay, uh, working together with all. Uh, our supply chain collaborators uh, signing uh, uh, framework agreements and uh, leveraging uh, all our uh, big and, and large portfolio. Okay, then the OPEX, uh, of course, we are uh, we are uh, the owners of our uh, operation and maintenance uh, companies of our projects. So experience. Uh, uh, synergies and uh, and uh, less learners as well as uh, again leveraging the, the leveraging the the, the large uh, portfolio and uh, uh, working together with uh, the local uh, subcontractors makes us to lower as well the, the opex and as I said before uh, for lowering the financing cost uh, the most important thing is uh, managing uh, the construction and the operational uh, risk. In order to to uh, match uh, anyhow, by all means, your your financial uh, your financial model. Okay. Uh, another important uh, pillar of uh, our strategy is uh, the proper market selection. Okay. So we consider uh, several several variables that uh, we understand that are key to deploy our cost leadership principle and uh, only target uh, markets that rigorously uh, meet this, this condition. Some of those you can uh, see here, uh, which, are, which are these uh, some of these uh, variables, okay? Uh, the main reason of this strategy is that uh, we want to be significant players on the markets that uh, we are present. And uh, last for a long, long time, not like, uh, uh, some developers that uh, develop the projects and then uh, sell these projects uh, in, in a while, no? And this is why we support also local content policies. And this is one of the other topics that we want to discuss uh, today. So we understand that uh, since we are getting some uh, uh, benefits on the, on the countries that uh, we target, we need to contribute and we need to develop with uh, our 
projects uh, with our revenues <clears throat> to the local growth of the of the countries okay and uh, and and the authorities to develop these uh, local content policies okay and support uh, by any means um and and uh, also we see that uh, these local content policies that somehow are are, are somehow uh, not very well welcomed by some uh, some uh, uh, stakeholders. Um, we have seen that uh, in this pandemic situation, if we would have developed the local the, the right local content levels, we would have uh, escaped a lot of issues of uh, shortage in the in the in the materials, in equipments, and also avoid the the all the increase that we have saw in the um, in the in the transportation for example cost that uh, multiplied by 10 times okay so meaningful local content regulations um, made to let's say grow the country but not um, stopping the progress of the technology because we have so as well in some countries that uh, they have uh, implemented some not meaningful or not reasonable um local content policies and that stopped or somehow put on hold the evolution of the of the industry okay uh, in the region uh, uh, we see that uh, clearly is, uh, is, uh, is is a trend okay we i mean we have seen a long time ago in, in oman with the urbanization uh, uh, policy we have uh, seen as well in, in morocco with the industrial uh, industrial targets we have seen as well uh, since long time ago um, in, in, in somehow in, a, in, a, in Saudi that now is uh, becoming a, a, a way more uh, standardized uh, after they have uh, formed this uh, local content and procurement authority. Okay, these process were in place uh, a while ago uh, and implemented by Aramco and, and Savic, and now is <clears throat> is uh, not only these two. Uh, private companies, but uh, uh, it is also all the projects, uh, public uh, tenders, and all the projects developed. Uh, they have to stick to these rules that are very clear with the standards and with the uh, scorecards, etc. So this is a meaningful and very smart way to uh, start uh, um, developing local content uh, policies, and I think that it is going to be very, very. Uh, Okay, so in, in summary, um, uh, the success or, 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 the, or the good, uh, uh, well done uh, work, I uh, would say, the, of Aqua Power has been based on three, three main uh, pillars. Okay, uh, tailored the solution, as I said, the tailored design for every each project. We don't, I mean, we run uh, uh, hundreds of uh, simulations in every single project, even if we know that the optimal configuration in one region we know very well which is it but we keep evaluating every time okay uh, common objective with uh, our our uh, stakeholders and uh, and uh, not only our shareholders but as well the countries or the regions where we uh, develop uh, all our projects uh, commitment with them okay and then uh, focus on innovation and focus on, on new technologies. Um, we are now going towards hydrogen. Uh, I mean, that we have been pioneer in some technologies like uh, CSP and then some, some uh, uh, new technologies in solar. So this approach uh, made us successful in, in, uh, in the technology uh, implementation. Okay, and uh, I'll finish my uh, presentation here. Please feel free to uh, ask me uh, whatever you uh, want to know or further information. Okay, so I'm very happy to answer whatever question yes. you may have. Yes, thank you, Mr. Alvaro. Um, as usual, uh, we need to uh, leave some time for the audience to type down their questions, and perhaps we can go through some of the pre-collected ones first. Um, as you just mentioned, that MENA region is in fast-paced development with great potential. Um, Saudi, UAE, Oman, and your pride prioritized markets like Egypt, Jordan, and uh, Morocco. Um, the supply chain has play um, has been playing a, a very important role in not only mitigating the risks but also optimizing the costs. 
um, as the competitive growth, many OEM companies and EPC companies are starting to localize the teams and office. In terms of developing supply chain in the MENA region, um, what's the biggest challenge or the gap areas do you see? Well, uh, I think that uh, this uh, COVID and pandemic situation made uh, everything uh, much more difficult. Okay, I think that uh, up to uh, the pandemic uh, came, and there was a, a clear trend of, uh, of establishing new uh, offices and new OEMs in the region. Now that uh, the, somehow the products are quite on hold, uh, this is the, 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 the main the main challenge. Okay, but this is a this is something that is not uh, structural. This is something that is uh, conjunctural. So hopefully, uh, very soon will will uh, will uh, will gone. Okay, and uh, and then uh, I think that uh, this uh, this region has a pipeline enough to uh, to make the local uh, the local manufacturers um, being setting up their their manufacturing facilities here without any major challenge. So. If, if, if other than the pandemic, I don't see any 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 constraint and any uh, really challenge to, to come here and, and establish the, the, the local supply chain. Plenty of opportunities. Yes, um, um, the, 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 the pandemic and the COVID situation uh, has really changed the dynamics uh, of the whole industry. And uh, in terms of priorities, is there any shifts when you manage the supply chain globally and in the MENA region? Well, uh, in terms of in terms of priorities, uh, yes, uh, I think that uh, the firstly um, we need to uh, rethink about the policies that uh, that has been uh, agreed with the local governments, okay, you know, all in the region because that uh, were thought before the pandemic. So I think that uh, and, and, and policies are very important in order to uh, and a smooth and secured uh, local content policies is deployed. So this is the first thing we need to rethink about that. And then we need to uh, look at, uh, of course, the, the, the implementation schedules that we had uh, somehow secured uh, before the pandemic and, uh, and during the pandemic, because we thought that the duration of the pandemic was was going to be less. Okay, and uh, and after that, I think that uh, as I said, uh, once we uh, somehow uh, rethink about the scenarios and uh, and uh, and uh, agree on the new scenarios, uh, the ways is smooth and is is uh, clear. Yes, um, you, you mentioned about the pre-signed contracts uh, as well as uh, some local content challenges uh, during your negotiation with the government. Can you, can you elaborate more on the local content policies in respective countries, for example, in, in Egypt, in Jordan, and in Morocco, or in the kingdom? What, what, what's the biggest challenge you find that would keep you awake in the night? Well, uh, basically, the, um, sometimes, uh, and, and, and this is somehow we are, we are uh, uh, it's our fault, sometimes the, the lack of commitment of, uh, of the stakeholders, okay? When you need to take an investment decision, you need uh, to have some certainties and some uh, commitments from all the stakeholders, of takers, EPC contractors, government, uh, utility authorities, uh, everything, okay? So these are, uh, for me, this is the main challenge, but, uh, but uh, making a, main, a meaningful uh, evolution of the industry, will, uh, that will be uh, solved uh, very, very easy. No? Uh, and then depending on the, depending on the, on the, on the countries, um, uh, I think that uh, all over the region, the local content policies that I saw are somehow um, very fair. Okay, the countries with uh, with uh, more industrial uh, capacities uh, implemented more local content, and countries with uh, such without uh, such industrial capacities uh, were uh, requesting for less local content. So uh, I think that uh, uh, in this region, I didn't see any local content policy that make uh, makes no sense and was no, were not. 
Yes, and we have just received one question from the Q&A box from um, Hans Sauter um, to you. Do you think you are able to attract top suppliers in times when US and Euro markets uh, will face a strong growth uh, in areas of higher margins? MENA is known as the region with the lowest margin. I, I think it points to um, how to build, how can we build a resilient supply chain? And do you have any put, uh, have, do you have any you know input on that? For sure. I mean, this is this is not a, a new question. I mean, it's a, this is a, a very I would say a recurrent question. Uh, but selection of the markets is a, is a matter of choice, no? And some suppliers uh, basically uh, are targeting the uh, high market, high high uh, uh, revenues markets, and some others are more focused focused on on high growth uh, uh, regions and being present uh, and being uh, present here in this region okay there are a lot of suppliers and a lot of technology partners that uh, don't want to come here but there are a lot more that uh, are very happy uh, being present in this region because they make them uh, a growth and uh, and a perspective that uh, maybe other markets cannot uh, um, cannot uh, offer, no? uh, even if the, the, the margins are uh, higher in other markets, the, the growth path and the, the size of the projects that the, uh, this region is offering is not comparable with the rest of the world. Yes, and uh, many of the procurement managers or decision makers have been thinking about localizing some part of the supply chain. When we talk about major module partners, apparently it will be mainly in China, but uh, uh, what about other things or other components that can be or need to be localized into the MENA region, in your opinion? So, um, I mean, localization is always uh, driven by uh, either the uptake or the ability of the industry to uh, use the synergies that uh, the actual industry uh, has with the new industry uh, becoming predominant. No? Okay, and we saw that uh, in the region, for example, a very successful case of localization has been the, uh, the tracker, okay, manufacturer. And this is because the steel industry in the region is very, very strong, and the similarities and the synergies with uh, with the solar industry were were clear. No, so uh, in the in the in the, uh, this, the switching the industry from uh, maybe uh, uh, transmission line towers, tower tracker is very easy, is very clear, and uh, and this is this is the successful part. For modules is different. For modules, uh, there should be, a, as I said before, a commitment from all the stakeholders, uh, and uh, and uh, sometimes uh, should be driven by some incentives and some agreement uh, of take or of taker agreements or or granted of takes. Okay, but uh, but this is a second phase. Now we need to focus on localizing whatever makes sense, whatever is easy to localize, and whatever uh, doesn't impact the, the, let's say, the cost of electricity after localizing. And, and in Manam region, as we just introduced, um, that every developer is trying to reach the lowest LCOE. How would you focus um, um, the, the, the future increase in PV capex, in Mana especially? And, uh, well, and what role can local EPCs and in installers play in such a huge project pipeline? Okay, so so the so the, the price increase for sure will have an impact on the tariffs uh, of the upcoming projects. Uh, we saw yesterday or the day before, I don't remember well, the 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 results of the last tender that happened in the region that was Red Door Three, uh, Red Door Round Three. Okay. Um, that has been tendered the uh, past year uh, with uh, the, a level of prices even uh, 30 or 40% uh, lower than nowadays, okay? And we saw that the tariffs uh, went up, okay? Because uh, we were uh, foreseeing that the prices were going to, to be higher, okay? So, I mean, we, we if, if, if there is a cost increase, in, especially in solar, where uh, 70 or 80 percent of the cost of one power plant is uh, is the is the material. Uh, we can we can do nothing. Uh, for sure, there will be an impact on, on on the on the on the tariff of the electricity. The role of the IPP and the role of the 
uh, utility companies is that uh, this uh, cost increase uh, is the, the lesser possible, okay? And try to uh, somehow uh, compensate with our revenues or whatever uh, this increase and uh, still delivering uh, electricity at a cost that uh, is, uh, is, is affordable, okay? And then uh, related with the second question, and, uh, which is the role of uh, local installers and subcontractors in, in uh, large uh, power plants, uh, all, uh, I mean, plenty of opportunities. We are, we are using local installers and, uh, and, uh, and the local um, subcontractors in, in all, all the projects. And, and this is why I explained in some of, of my slides that uh, developing the local supply chain is, is uh, fundamental for us. It's a, it's a pillar that comes from, from the reason that we want to uh, be present and lasting and on the region that we target for a long time. So if we don't develop the supply chain being developers, uh, investors, and operators, uh, we cannot last in the in the regions uh, for a long time. Yes. So for us, um, it's fundamental. Yes. Um, however, in the long run, uh, I think we are going to hit the one one cent energy tariff uh, very soon. Um, how, how do you think, what, what do you think is the best industrial strategy for building a local solar industry that makes sense to this quite low prices? Name the top three successful factors in your mind. Uh, okay, I mean, that, that was the target. Uh, we were very close uh, with our projects, uh, uh, with uh, our project uh, of uh, Faisalia, but the reality is that uh, every project is different. So you cannot talk about uh, one cent as a common pro common target of uh, all the products of the world. For example, in other markets, you have the merchant market, so it's much easier to uh, to deliver a, a low uh, tariff because you know that after some years you're going to have the merchant market that will recover all your all your profits. Okay, so uh, maybe changing the the rules of the markets in some of the region is one of the of the uh, best way. To, uh, to be closer of this uh, of this tariff, but at the end of the day, it's not it's not a real it's not a levelized cost of electricity because it will only happen or will only last for a few years. Okay, uh, the best way is the is the is the way that we were um, following uh, uh, until the pandemic came. No uh, improvement in the technologies, uh, making larger uh, uh, power plants that allow to distribute uh, more the the fixed cost. Okay, and 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 uh, make it more profitable, uh, and then working together with uh, the full supply chain. For me, as I, as I said before, designing and technology are the two uh, uh, key part, key actions that you have to uh, tackle in order to be a cost uh, leader. And uh, there is no more because uh, at the end of the day, every, everybody has to make money and uh, and. Uh, Increasing the efficiency is the only way because the solar resource is one and is fixed and you cannot improve. Uh, so only the only way is to improve the technology and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, and applying all the new technologies in the upcoming projects. Yes, uh, and, and apart from um, localization, uh, localizing the supply chain, there are also some new trends rising up in an industry, such as uh, digitalization of supply chain for example, raised by Mazda, and uh, uh, NG is talking about decarbonization to cut the carbon footprint of the supply chain. Um, what, what's your um, input on that? And uh, um, what are the latest efforts um, being, developed by, uh, being developed by Aqua in terms, okay, of, I mean, in terms of the overall effective management? So, so uh, digitalization and uh, artificial intelligence is, uh, is a trend and you cannot stop, okay? And it affects not only the supply chain, but affects all the aspects uh, of the projects from the, from the design itself uh, and up to the, the construction. So being more efficient in, in uh, efficiency, uh, not only uh, is the efficiency of the module, the module itself, but efficiency is, uh, is, is, a, is a, a concept that is uh, getting the, the, the highest outcomes of the minimum inputs. So uh, this efficiency can be, uh, should be uh, implemented in all the stages of the project. 
uh, including supply chain, of course, and that will um, allow us to uh, again, yeah, lowering the, the prices and uh, in somehow uh, make us able to uh, lowering the prices at the same time that we are decarbonizing because decarbonizing and uh, making the the world uh, greener uh, somehow has a cost and uh, we need to compensate uh, making the, the, the plants more efficient and uh, implementing artificial intelligence and militarization in all, in all the uh, value chain. Yes, and, uh, and during our previous discussion, you also touched on Aqua's latest initiative in green hydrogen, um, the reputed NEON project and many more in the future. Uh, can, can you explain a bit more about the green hydrogen supply chain and how it works in many region? Well, uh, the, the green hydrogen supply chain works uh, everywhere in the same in the same manner. No? And the, the, the origin of the world uh, uh, of the world uh, green hydrogen is because uh, you are only using a renewable uh, energy uh, sources to. Uh, convert your water to uh, into hydrogen. Okay, and in this in this uh, region is the let's say most suitable uh, some of the most suitable of the world because we have solar that uh, has a high uh, capacity factor, and then we have some uh, uh, good green resources that complement as well and increase the capacity factor of the plants. Okay, and uh, and uh, also we are delivering the, the most competitive uh, tariffs and in terms of electricity and not only in uh, especially in solar no? uh, so uh, these allow us to deliver um, grid hydrogen somehow with the target of uh, one dollar per kilogram okay that is the target uh, uh, and uh, we are very close so uh, using renewable energies I think that uh, this target is, is feasible. And also, uh, we need to work together with all the supply chain uh, uh, actors, like uh, the, all the electrolyzers and uh, and uh, all increasing the efficiency and all the supply chain uh, players in order to decrease as well, the, not only decrease the price of the system itself, not only increasing the efficiency. So yeah, I think that the target is there and uh, is feasible. Yes, and uh, one last question to conclude the session. Um, if you were um, a government regulator in the kingdom or uh, in any other uh, MENA countries, um, what be the one thing you would do to speed up the renewable energy development in region? Well, I think that uh, the, 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 I mean, the regulators have uh, everything in their hands. Uh, I would not end uh, to list the things to speed up the, the, the uh, the evolution of the of the sector. If I was uh, if I was a regulator, but for sure uh, the, the role of the regulator is uh, regulating properly uh, uh, with uh, giving security to the to the investors. Okay, with a long term view, not only with a short term view, in order to speed up. But uh, but uh, yeah, security on regulating uh, the security on the revenues, regulating the uh, proper implementation of the uh, local uh, local content and local supply chain, and uh, and for sure, uh, uh, kind of uh, boosting this uh, this uh, technology uh, uh, evolution with some incentives and with some uh, investment uh, uh, coming from the government itself and the regulator itself, because at the end of the day, if, uh, they have to give confidence to the investors. The, the first uh, the best way of uh, giving uh, confidence is investing yourself. Thank you so much, Mr. Alvaro. I, I think I pushed you a bit harder, um, but nonetheless, thank you very much for joining us and for staying us for staying with us until now. Uh, it was a great presentation, and uh, we look forward to more business success from Aqua in the region and in thank the world. You, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, Molly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and uh, this marks the end of our today's session, uh, as well as the end of our um, Impact Mana solar session.